and Peekaboo coming out with the Subtlety Rogue. Over on the right side of the screen, we've got Casca on the Resto Shaman, Goo playing the, uh, I believe that is a Demonology Warlock, uh, and Vanguard's on the Retribution Paladin. Yeah, this is going to be a good game indeed. We can see Peekaboo pushing in, trying to look for that sap, but it looks like everyone is in combat, not going to be able to land that right away. We'll have to see how they decide to open up. Looks like Goob's going to be thrown into that cheap shot. Root beam over onto Casca immediately. That's overlapped a little bit with the kidney shot, but that was a nice beam coming in from Jamili. A lot of pressure early on over onto Goob. He's going to pour it away. He should be fine from that opener. Temple Storm really not able to force too much at this point in the game. Yeah, Goop's still taking a little bit of pressure here, but like you said, not able to force too much. Temple Storm not able to get too much going. However, they do still have their cooldowns going. Uh, we've got the Celestial Alignment coming out from Jamili. He's trying to put out as much spread pressure as he can, but it, honestly, it seems like the more spells he casts, the more damage his team takes. Temple Storm actually taking a lot of pressure right now from your name here. Now, Cap, yeah, into that stun, are they able to get something off of that? Yeah, that's the unending resolve. Goop taking a lot of damage, ports away once again. I think he actually still has his gate available. Jamili trying to push in Lando Cyclone, so the Vanguard's keeping him at bay with that Avenging Wrath, putting out a lot of pressure with that Retribution Paladin cooldown. Full mind control over on Goop, but Jamili getting lower and lower. Gorecki now caught into the fear. That mind control may have cost him this game. Jamili trying to get away, caught into the Axe Toss. Bellord's been used as well. Vanguard taking a little damage. Jamili, or sorry, Peekaboo swapping over to him, trying to keep him alive. Gorecki getting hodged up. Jamili still kiting away in bear form, trying to get behind the pillar, kiting away from Vanguard, but he might actually go down. Can your name here? Take this first game. Really gets gripped away. Still has to splice up. Still has his offensive cooldowns as well. The huge ray of hope heal going to be tossed over onto Jamili, stabilizing his HP. Yeah, that was super, super close. That ray of hope uh, was all that really saved Jamili at that point. Uh, now Gorek, he is starting to run out of cooldowns. He does still have his Guardian Spirit available, but if they can't stop this constant pressure coming out from your name here, this guy, game is not going to go on for too much longer uh, for Tempo Storm here. Now Jamili caught in that Axe Toss. Do they have the follow-up damage? Not just yet. Looks like both Goob and Vanguard's waiting for their offensive cooldowns to come back up again. Peekaboo's starting to take some spread pressure as well as Jamili. Once again, Gorek, he gets silenced. He's got that mind control he's trying to get off. Uh, does not look like he was able to get too much done with that. Unfortunately, does get a nice big heal onto Jamili there, but Peekaboo's still in a little bit of trouble here. Yeah, Peekaboo getting lower and lower. No evasion, just using his Cloak of Shadows as well. So with those cooldowns, Gorek's able to top them off quite easily. You can see Gorek spamming out some damage right now, trying to build up uh, that stun once again. Full kidney shot over onto Casca. He's caught in the middle of the map right now. Vanguard wasn't really able to help him, but unfortunately, Temple Storm couldn't find the damage. Cass is going to be completely fine playing that Relentless Talent. With that orc, those stuns aren't going to be lasting too long on him. Jamili getting locked out, trying to go for the full moon cast. Is he going to be able to get it off? It is. Connects over onto Vanguard. Vanguard's getting lower and lower. Blind over onto Casca right now. Vanguard's trying to kite away. Does not want to have to use his bubble, but with the safety of the pillar and the rest of Shaman heals uh, and said it's going to be used by Casca. That should be enough to keep your name here alive for now. Yeah, that's the first real cooldowns having to come out from your name here as well. They are still in great position throughout the rest of this. Celestial alignment is coming out from Jamili. He's trying to get that spread pressure going, trying to get as many of his dots up as he can. Vanguard's dip super low. The Divine Shield does have to come out from Vanguard's there. He's going to try and turn around. He does still have his wings active, but he actually gets cycloned off of that. Uh, he's still just trying to keep that pressure going. Jamili uh, still taking lots of damage, but uh, Gorecki able to keep him alive with that Archangel, no problem. Uh, so it looks like Tempo Storm may have finally found a way that they're going to claw themselves back into this match. Yeah, Temple Storm doing a great job there. That MD into the cycle is really preventing Casca from topping off Vanguard's. Vanguard's using that pillar once again. Jamili caught into the full fear goob, just trying to control the matchup a little bit, spamming out those crowd controls. This is really good for Temple Storm, though. Defensively, they're looking really well. They're able to get the bubble quite easily there with just a full root beam over on the Casca. If they can do that setup one more time, and Goob's not able to stop it, Vanguard could be in a lot of trouble. But I think at this point in the game, your name here, they're going to be playing very defensive. They don't want to overextend. Full kitty shot over on the Casca. Mind control on Vanguard's. A nice swap over on the goob. He gates back over to Casca. That should be enough to keep him alive. Gets Root Beam locked out, though. Nice job by Jamili pushing in, locking out Casca. Goob's still getting lower and lower. Still has the unending resolve, though. Able to port away to safety once again. Yeah, Tempo Storm starting to do a really good job of actually getting crowd control onto Casca, which is allowing them those windows of opportunity to push in on Goob, push in on Vanguards. Now Vanguard's into that Cyclone. Do they have any follow-up off of that? Jamili trying to get her roots out, uh, but was not able to actually land the entangling roots there. Uh, still so much spread pressure coming out from Goob, uh, primarily, I believe, onto Jamili and Peekaboo, just making sure that Gorecki has to constantly be careful not to get himself uh, too far out of line of sight or be too dangerous uh, with those mind controls. Actually using the leap of faith there to get, uh, I believe it was uh, on Peekaboo, trying to get him over. I'm not, I didn't actually see who that was uh, cast on. Jamili now taking a little bit of damage. The uh, defensive cooldown comes out from Gorecki to help keep him alive. Uh, the Ray of Hope actually able to keep him alive. No problem there, so that was not an issue whatsoever. Uh, Jamili does get silenced on his, uh, looked like he was trying to cast a full moon there, was not able to cast it, uh, but both 
teams are actually starting to take this a little bit more defensively, just looking for their next opportunity to move in, and this might be it right here. Yeah, well, Vanguard knows he's in trouble now into the full KD shot. Full blind on Casca. Vanguard needs to be able to get away, actually activating the bop. Might have to actually go to that gateway and get some line of sight. Really just tearing into him right now. Full root beam over on a casket. Can Vanguard freedom him out? Looks like he's able to. Vanguard's getting him out of that. Full fear over on a Jamelia as well. Hodge over on a peekaboo. Nice crowd control coming in from your name here. Good job deflecting that attack. They're actually trying to get really aggressive over on a Jamelia. Wings has been activated. The Bell Ward as well. Full kidney shot over on a casket. They're swapping onto him. Right now, Temple Storm has a huge mana lead as well. This is a nice swap on Casca, making him use even more mana. Astral Shift's going to be used as well. So just forcing defensive cooldowns all over the place is Temple Storm. Your name here, not in the best position right now. Peekaboo getting a little bit low, caught into the axe toss, but with that, I mean, Vanguard's was into the Cyclone, so they just really couldn't find the damage. Yeah, we're starting to see Your Name here having used all of their crowd control defensively. They used a Blood Elf Silence to stop Jamili's full moon cast in there, as well as the axe toss just to get Peekaboo. I don't think they were trying to kill him. I think they were just trying to get him to stop killing them. Uh, now Goop taking a bit of pressure once again. He does still have his Unending Resolve available, but he also has his Demonic Circle. He's able to just teleport out of there, no problem, trying to get as many of his demons up and empowered as possible and like you say this is starting to look like it's a really strong game for tempo storm they've been able to turn it around we're now seven percent into dampening as this goes on we're going to start seeing that mana lead that tempo storm has going be more and more important as cask is going to have to be spending bigger chunks of his mana pool to keep his teammates alive yeah cask is going to have to go for a drink at some point because he is not going to out mana this holy priest full root beam on the cask right now can tempo storm find the damage going for the full moon over on the goob a lot of damage it's connecting it. getting him lower and lower but unending resolve was activated to deflect some of that incoming burst Good job by Goob. He still has his port in his gate as well. Trying to turn around the pressure over on Jamili. They need to find some crowd control on Goreki. Your name here is running out of time. They need to find the damage. They need to find the crowd control. Jamili should be fine, though. He still has bar skin available. Uh, in bear form, he's going to be extra tanky. And without the Avenging Wrath for Vanguards, they're not going to be able to find too much damage. Full kitty shot over on the Casca with the Cyclone on Vanguards. Casca getting swapped to now. Peekaboo causing a lot of pressure for his team. Jamili pushing in, trying to find the damage, trying to keep him low. Uh, but right now, Temple Storm, I mean, they have all the momentum. No one on the team is getting low. They have the mana advantage. Full blind on Casca. Goob getting lower and lower. No unending resolve. And Vanguard's help him out at all. Doesn't look like he's able to port away. Full sap on Casca. Goob needs to live a little bit longer. Nice swap over on Jamili, though. Vanguard's trying his best to counter pressure, but Goob getting lower and lower. And finally wow. taken out. Temple Storm's going to be taking the first game against Uranium here, going up in the series 1-0. to zero. That was an absolutely perfect. Proudkin's going to go straight all the way across and try to get some early damage in, maybe go for a super quick kill? Uh, or are they going to try and play a little bit more defensive, a little bit more reactive? We'll definitely have to see Peekaboo charging in right now. He's going to be the all-star player for his team. Landing stuns on everyone, full sap over on the Vanguards. He actually trinkets out and sanks Casca out of the stun immediately, so not having that cooldown available. Casca getting lower and lower, off cheap shot over on the Vanguards. Full blind on Casca, gets bopped out of that immediately. So, so many defensive cooldowns have been forced out. Full hacks over on the Goreki, but it gets dispelled by Jamili right away. The TR is a little bit wasted. Full hot now over on the Goreki. Jamili getting lower and lower. Not using that bar skin just yet. Nice peels coming in from Peekaboo, diffusing some of this incoming damage coming in from Yurnam here very early on. You can see Jamili activating that incarnation. Full Moon has been used over on Yasuke, getting lower and lower as well. Still has the dive of the sword, though. Full clone over on Vanguard's kidney shot over on Casca. Nice job by Temple Storm, making sure every time they stun Casca, Vanguard is in crowd control, so you can't see that blessing of Sank. Yeah, it looks like uh, Yasuki finally had a chance there to connect to Jamili. They've been doing a lot of damage to uh, to, to Peekaboo throughout this, but uh, really having trouble actually getting over to the, the target they really want to be going after, which appears to be Jamili. Now Peekaboo uh, is getting that ray of hope from Goreki. That's going to keep him alive. Uh, he actually gets disarmed off of that, so they're just trying to limit his damage at this point, trying to put out as much as they can into Jamili. But Jamili doing a great job of constantly kiting away. Uh, Vanguards and Yasuki both constantly being put into some sort of CC. Now we see a full mind control going on, and Vanguards cast it gets super low, has to pop the Astral Shift as well as the Ascendant, uh, trying to heal himself up while keeping his teammates aggressive. Uh, and it may be turning around a little bit. Uh, they got a little bit of damage into Jamili there, but a nice big heal comes out from Goreki, and that's going to stabilize tempo once again. Yeah, these swaps are so important. You can see Goreki using that Chastise on over on the Vanguards uh, during those swaps, so they really can't help Casca at all. Jamili getting a little bit low right now. Goreki actually having to use his trinket there. I believe that was on Hodge, so yeah. getting out of the stun should be able to stabilize his HP. Peekaboo getting lower and lower. This is looking not too bad for your name here. I mean, Temple Storm, they're having nice swaps, but they're not accomplishing too much. Uh, Casca, I mean, of course, he's playing an orc with Relentless. This is another swap over on him, but Blessing of Sanks is going to be used. A little bit of a mistimed go there by Temple Storm. Uh, it's going to allow your name here to get super aggressive right now. Jamili actually getting that Cyclone reflected. Good job by Yoski there, slowing down that. They can land any CC on a Goreki right now. Jamili could be in a little bit of trouble. Uh, that's going to be a full Hex with a stun on a Jamili. Um, he's able to not actually dispel. I'm not actually sure what broke that Hex there. I think uh, it was actually the Totem. He just moved out of it. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it looks like he's playing Voodoo Totem. So good call there. 
Uh, good job uh, watching that. Gorecki at the end of this game. Actually not ahead of Casca, so that's one key thing to note, that uh, if this game goes on longer, your name here might have the advantage in that way. Yeah, full blind on a Casca. They're trying to turn it around onto, it looks like Yask uh, doing a little bit of damage to him. Now a Cyclone on Casca. Is Yask going to be okay? He doesn't care. He's just going, me, M Fork, me go face, doing as much damage as he can, trying to put it as, uh, into Gorecki right now. Uh, not getting too much done just yet, but with that Hammer of Justice, Gorecki has no answer for that. The Ray of Hope was out, but this may end up being a negative ray of hope, uh, depending on where it went. No, it does look like it ended up being positive overall anyway. Uh, so they weren't able to get what they wanted off of that. Now the Cyclone's coming out onto both Vanguards and Yaski there. Uh, Jamili doing a great job just cycling those, making sure that the team of your name here doesn't really get an opportunity to go full uh, full on with their momentum. Casca forced to use his Astral Shift once again, gets cycloned off of that. Again, very good Cyclones coming from Jamili right now. Yeah, that's a problem. When you get off Jamili and try to go directly, Jamili just tears into you. You can see your name here still trying to recover from that moment. Jamili getting a little bit low now, but that smoke bomb onto Vanguard's making you find the damage. This is surely going to be the bubble. Casca cannot heal him right now. Full kidney shot over onto Casca. Sank is not going to be available. Vanguard trying to kite away. He's doing a good job so far. Able to hold onto that bubble. Good job by your name here. That was a key moment. They need to keep that bubble. You can see from the last game, when they do have that bubble available, they're not afraid to get aggressive without it, though. It's very scary times for your name here, so they can always fall back on that cooldown. Uh, right now, it looks like they want to get aggressive once again. Budetone going to use over on a Gorecki. Uh, Root Beam now on a Casca. Yoski getting swapped to a lot of damage over on him. Jamili trying to follow it up with some pressure. Full Hodge over on a Gorecki, though. Disarm over onto Peekaboo. And now Jamili getting swapped to, getting shocked up on his cast. He's able to just easily displace away. Peekaboo is doing a good job. Keeling gets caught into the Storm Bolt, has to trink it out of that. So they can keep these consistent swaps over on a Peekaboo. Eventually, he's going to run out of trinkets, and they could potentially find a, a hole in Temple Storm's defenses that way. Yeah, I just feel like they're not getting as much done as they really need to there. Peekaboo does have uh, basically all of his defensive cooldowns available. He's got his Vanish, his Evasion, his Cloak of Shadows, and Gorecki now has all of his available as well. So uh, they they can definitely, if they're able to keep aggressive onto Peekaboo, get that get that done. But they keep swapping over, trying to get swaps onto Gorecki right now, trying to get swaps onto Jamili when they can. Uh, Jamili, once again, spamming out those Cyclones, just not letting your name here get anything done. Blind went out on Casca. That did get broken by the Blessing of Protection from Vanguards. He's been doing a great job breaking that every single time it comes up. But now the Root Beam onto Casca, uh, that actually broke the Root Broke early, so he was able to move out of it. That's a very, very lucky break there for your name here, allowing them to stay a little bit more aggressive and get a, a, some decent damage into Jamili. But once again, he's managed to kite away. The Double Fear comes out onto both Jamili and Peekaboo, followed up by the Hammer of Justice on Gorecki. Can they get anything done here? That was such a long amount of CC onto Gorecki, and they just really weren't able to get anything done off of that. Uh, Jamili getting kicked on his, uh, I believe that was his full moon cast. They're going to have to be watching really close for that. Uh, he was actually able to get it off. Uh, now he's got the half moon coming out as well, so they're going to have to be watching for that full moon from Jamili, looking for a big chunk of damage coming out from that, because if that if that goes off, and if he can keep up this damage, Casca's going to be out of mana very soon. There's just not much disruption on Gorek. He's able to just sit back and throw out heals over and over and over. That's going to be resetting uh, his Holy Word Serenity, allowing him to throw big heals right now. He has to play a little bit of catch-up, really getting interrupted. Both Yasuke and Vanguard's able to connect. It looks like they want to make another swap over on a Casca. Casca doing a good job with the Earthen Shield totem very early on. But Gorecki, once again, spamming out the Mind Control, spamming out the heals. Jamili getting lower and lower, though. Uh, luckily, for Temple Storm, he still has uh, the Guardian Angel as well as the Ray of Hope. So a lot of defensive cooldowns available for Temple Storm. And now Mana has sort of shifted in the favor of Temple Storm. I'm not sure if Casca's decided to get really aggressive with the Purges, but all of a sudden, he's almost completely in. We're at 6% dampening in this game so far. Disarm over onto Pika. They're trying to slow him down a bit. Vanguard's taking some damage, but it looks like he's going to be fine. I mean, they need... Uh, I don't know what your name here has to do right now. That's a full Hodge on Gorecki. Jamili is in, safely in the room, though. The swap over on the Peekaboo is very nice. I like the spread pressure. Just hit the target that they can. Yeah. A lot of damage to be forced out there. Now Gorecki has to play catch-up, and they're actually charging in. This is a good position for them, but they need to make something happen. Casca is almost completely tapped on man at this point of the game. Looks like a big swap coming in from Temple Storm over onto Casca right now. Stun over onto Yoski. Uh, Casca is forced into that Astral Shift, so uh, he's not going to have that defensive cooldown a little bit later, but other than that, he's completely fine. Yeah, Casca does have the advantage of being the Resto Shaman in this matchup, which means that his heals, uh, as they get into dampening, his heals will be more effective on lower health targets, but it doesn't matter if Jamili and Peekaboo are able to just blow somebody up. Vanguard's now trying to get aggressive here. They do have some nice damage going into Jamili. That's going to force out uh, a whole ton of cooldowns. The Barkskin and the Guardian Angel coming out onto Jamili right now. Maybe a little bit of an overlap there. They may have an opportunity uh, right coming out of this uh, as those cooldowns have now faded. If they can get some sort of CC onto Gorecki right now, Jamili could be in a lot of trouble. He's actually going to Blazer Beast out of there and try and continue uh, keeping his damage up. Vanguards and Yasuki are going to be able to reconnect. They just
just need some kind of CC to land onto Gorecki. But look at Gorecki's mana. He's spent all of it. He's completely tapped at this point. He's actually a little bit lower than Casca. This could actually be a, a huge uh, play at, uh, attempt here from your name here to be able to turn this back around. Yeah, I, I really think Temple Storm needs to focus on Vanguards. They need to try to land some crowd control over on a Casca. Looks like that is their best target in this matchup, but they just can't find it right now. Full Hodge over on a Gorecki. Jamili trying to kite away once again. Temple Storm really doesn't have too much left defensively. Full stun over on a Vanguards. He actually pre sank there, though. So Casca not going to be caught in any stuns. Just easily able to get behind the pillar. Top himself off. Well done by Vanguards there. He's actually into the mind control. So realizing Temple Storm had to go there. That was their offensive cooldowns. Nice swap over on a Peekaboo. Trinkets out once again, spamming out that feint. Gorecki almost completely tapped, like you said, spamming out the heals. With that Ray of Hope, that should top Peekaboo off. But now, really nothing left for Temple Storm. Casca almost completely tapped on mana as well. Nice swap over onto Casca. Temple Storm, both teams just need to make sure they're doing as much damage as possible. Some nice swaps. Casca getting lower and lower into the third cheap shot. Still has that Astral Shift. Might have to activate it. Going to be using that Earthen Shield Totem to slow down some of this damage. Ascendant's going to be used as well. Vanguard's down to 50% HP. Caught into the full Cyclone right now. Temple Storm doing a good job. Full kick over onto Casca. Yasuke getting lower and lower. Temple Storm needs to shut down this Ascendant if they can. They could win the game right here. Full Root B. It's going to be a freedom. Good job by Vanguard's getting Casca out of that. Dive of the Sword has been used by Yasuke. That's going to be fading very, very shortly. And then, your name here really doesn't have anything left defensively. Full stun over on the Vanguard's. Are they able to force out the bubble? He still has that. It's been so long in the game, they haven't been able to force it. But at this point in dampening, I don't know if Casca can hold on much longer. Yeah, Vanguard's is almost going to have, absolutely going to have to use that here really, really soon. Yasuke goes in on Jamili. There's a full hammer of justice on Nagoreki, but it's about to wear off. Uh, Vanguard's unable to connect, unfortunately, not able to get over there and, and start putting that damage into Jamili now finally with that freedom able to get over there. He does still have his wings active, but the mind control comes out from Goreki. That's a huge opportunity right now for them to be able to turn something around here. Yas kind of stuck out in the open, not really able to connect to any targets right now, just tosses a Stormbolt over at Jamili. They're trying to go on to Peekaboo right now, it looks like, and I do kind of like that, but that's going to pull out, pull out, excuse me, the uh, the, the Ray of Hope from Goreki there. Stun goes on to Goreki immediately. Trinkets that Vanguard is super low, does have to finally use his, uh, uh, excuse me, his Divine Shield there, uh, and now they need to make something happen really, really soon here. Casca is completely tapped. Goreki does have a little bit of mana in the tank right now. They need to make something happen within the next 10, 15 seconds, or your name here is going to be out of this game. Kind of a scary moment for Goreki. Both Jamili and Peekaboo realizing the situation, but now that he get aggressive, full root beam onto Casca. Vanguard's down to 50% HP. Jamili trying to follow it up. Full stun into a full cyclone, potentially. Full kidney shot onto Vanguard's. This is looking so good for Temple Storm. Vanguard's getting lower and lower, uh, but he does have his artifact up. He does have Earthen Shield. Uh, he should be okay. Casca actually faking that Shadow Step kick there by uh, Peekaboo, so good job by him. Full mind control over onto Vanguard's. That's not, not going to allow Casca to heal him up whatsoever. Gorecki doing a good job playing offensive. Barskin has been activated by Jamili. We are at 30% dampening right now. Everyone from your name here is getting lower and lower. Hexstone is going to be tossed over onto Gorecki. He's slowing down some of his heals. Jamili, though, almost into execute range. The Ray of Hope has been used. Can Gorecki spam out the heals? This is going to be a negative Ray. Full kidney shot onto Yasuke. Cheap shot onto Vanguard. Jamili survives to live another day. Full Hodge on Peekaboo gets dispelled immediately. Peekaboo having to kite away right now, getting lower and lower. Temple Storm has nothing left in the tank. This is looking really good for your name here at this point of the game. They just need to make sure they follow up the damage. They need to not throw away this game. Jamili getting lower and lower. If they can just do damage and survive at this point of the game, it's going to be really good. Full fear. Peekaboo trinkets out of that immediately. Hex over onto Goreki right now. He runs out of the Hex totem, though. Jamili still alive for somehow, some way. That's a full Storm Bolt, though, but the full stun over onto Vanguard's Kidney Shot onto Casca. Can Temple Storm turn it around at this point of the game? Cheap shot onto Yasuke as well. Everyone from your name here is stunned up, but Peekaboo might might actually go down. He's almost in execute range. Caught in the full hods. He has Shadow Blitz up, trying to take down Vanguards. This is a race to the finish for both of these teams. Full kick on Casca. Vanguards needs to survive just a little bit longer. He has his Avenging Wrath out right now. Spamming out those flash of lights, trying everything he can to survive. That's a full cyclone on Casca, though. Vanguards goes down. Temple Storm survives another day. They're going to be going up 2-0 to zero in this series. The map actually plays in favor of Temple Storm. I was going to say, on Ruins of Border, I felt like Vanguards was always in range of Casca to get those Sanks off. On this map, he might have to overextend a little bit and Temple Storm can capitalize on that. We'll have to see what strategy your name here really goes with. Full sap over on the Vanguards right away. Who is Temple Storm going to open up on? Looks like full KD shot over onto Casca. Uh, really no damage going to be followed up. Looks like the Chastise Sun over on the Vanguards. Hex Totem on Gorecki. Both teams just CCing each other, really not finding too much damage early on.
Yeah, we really haven't seen, uh, outside of, I guess, the first few moments of the last game, we haven't really seen too much in the way of an opener coming from Tempo Storm. Goreki actually forced to use that Ray of Hope right away, taking tons of damage here. Is he going to be able to get enough healing off to make that positive? Yes, no problem whatsoever. Casca did get caught into that beam there, but was able to Ooh. sort of walk right out of it. Yas gets super low, though, has to use the Die by the Sword inside that Smoke Bomb from Peekaboo. Nice uh, little poke attempt there from Tempo Storm to be able to put that much damage into him this early. Yeah, Tempo Storm are really finding uh, a good offensive opportunity there as Yoski was getting hyper aggressive over on a Gorecki that smoke bomb with some nice crowd control over on the Casca. Gorecki though still getting trained down by Vanguard. Unfortunately Yoski has to play defensive. That's a full blind over on the Casca right now. Vanguard's getting lower and lower. Jamili finding all the damage there with his incarnation. He got MD'd into the kidney shot. Sap on the Casca. <laughs> Temple Storm says good night. Your name here is going to go down in this matchup. Three to zero by Temple Storm. Such a clean kill. Yeah that was uh that was impressively quick. Windwalker. Vice is on the Demon Hunter is going to be great pair. And of course, Envious playing that Holy Priest. Yeah, I mean, uh, Panda Gaming are known for their Mage Balance Druid combination and playing the highest mobility melee was a good option from Set to Destroy X. They love playing two melee DPS. So I think this was a wise decision here in the blind pick. They knew that Previ would be stepping in on Balance Druid. Seems like Vices and Whoopi are a little bit reluctant to start this fight now, leading the charge towards Previ, but Whoopi already getting Cyclone. Nice mass spell to remove that. Brian in a good position far away from the fight, now charging across, looking for his stun. Ops to stun Vices. Envious instantly dispelling that off. Nice play from Envious. Vices now can lead with a lot of pressure. Mage and immediately trinkets and sees that coming. Blinks away from the fight, trying to kite, but you cannot kite a Windwalker Demon Hunter combo. Mage in, in trouble, still on the run down at half. Nice cyclones from Previ. Do stop some of the pressure, but Vices looking for solo kill. Mind control on low HP. Envious really making the plays here early on. Now that was pretty good. No, wow. Mage and Spike down was trying to rely on that temporal shield, but he can't. Having to block to playing Glacial Spike, so we'll have to see if that'll pay off for Majidin. Vice is retreating just a little bit. Um, they know that this team set to destroy, uh, they know that Panda Gaming rather likes to run a lot and play the really, really long dampening style games with this comp. I think it's smart. They're doing a hit and run play yeah. style. They got an ice block. They can run away, reset, now push in again. Looking for Majin's second too. ice block. Uh, Majin immediately kites across the map. They're baiting Envious to come across in the middle, but Vice was... pulls the trigger, gets the second block instantly out of the way. I don't think Panda Gaming were expecting this composition. Set to destroy X, switch their attention to Brain. Brain barely escapes away with that freedom. Good polymorph peels from Majin. And of course, the balance through the Mage can peel forever, but if they can't find that kill window, will be difficult for them to end the match. With Serenity's the just coming back up. Coming off up. Them. It does look to be like a good position to set up for the win. In cap onto Brain. If Whoopi can connect, Majin surely will go down. Majin needs to be incredibly careful here. He does get interrupted on Polymorph. He's not able to activate the Temporal Shield oh. in time, and Brain needs to save him. Trades out an ultimate sacrifice, I believe, there, pausing the damage, allowing him to stabilize Majin's health bar. Still two Blessing Protections, but Envious can purge that off. Brain can't rely on those solely if Envious is in a good position. They stun up Previ, will be switching some damage to him, trying to maybe bait some cooldowns up from Brain, but they're not falling for it. Mind control spam from Envious, baits and counter spell. Now Envious will be able to free heal through the pressure. Vice is getting stunned up, surprisingly not being dispelled immediately there. I imagine maybe a Polymorph was dispelled earlier. Vice's and Whoopi both connecting to their target. Mage didn't seize that. Temporal shields right away. Mass dispel to try and get that off. Majidin kiting away, but they're stacking up onto Brain. Brain is trying to move at the same time away from Majidin. If they stack up for a double stun, that could just be the end of the match. Yeah, and there's a touch of Karma uh, out of Whoopi, trying to stay onto Majidin. Majidin goes for that poly, doesn't able to, wasn't able to land it, gets kicked. Uh-oh, this is not looking good for Majidin. Yeah, this is game-winning play as Majidin goes down. Brain the bubbles bubble. a second too late. Yeah, bubble, wings, trinket, everything out of uh, Brain right there. He was out of sacrifices. Uh, so, wow, it's exciting. Set to destroy X, leads by one. Panda Gaming looking to shake things up. Yep. Day one, set to destroy X in the lead, looking to try and get a second win. Panda Gaming forced off their main composition, and Majin will be playing Unholy Death Knight for this fight. It does appear like Seth Curry has Envious in his sights. Immediately interrupting that mind control, wants to follow it up with a stun here shortly, but they get Chaos Nova to way. They trick it out and follow with the leg sweep. Seth Curry is getting pressured, though, pretty heavily. Needs to be careful. Brain in a bad position as Seth gets knocked into the room. 
room by Envious. Touch of Karma barely connects in time. He pre-fades it. Seth is still low. Brian caught into a chastise. They imprison the Touch of Karma. Nice play from Vices. Can they get any crowd control on Brain? They mind control Seth low on health as well. Now Brain needs to connect those big heals. Avenging Wrath is popped. There's still pressure though. Vices and Whoopi are doing insane damage. Seth still at half. Brain struggling to deal with this. Now Seth is playing a Whirling Dragon Punch actually instead of Serenity. So it isn't that, that crazy huge burst on Envious because he can deny so much of it. I, I don't know what's going on. Seth is not topped off at any point of this game. He's not able to stay on target. Baits them away. Portals back to Envious. That was a nice play from Seth. But kiting a Demon Hunter and a Windwalker, you're not going to be able to do that. They're going to have almost 100% uptime. Vices is looking for the kill. Imprisoned on Brain. Seth is desperately just trying to run away from his opponents, but he's just not able to escape. Brain is in a hard position. Does he trade out the cooldowns? He's trying to be greedy, but every second that he's greedy, Seth is going to get more nervous. Vices pops Metamorphosis. Immediate Blessing and Protection. Triple Leg Sweep to deny the dispel on that. Like that play from Seth, but they get tr double Chaos Nova but in reverse. Anti-Magic Zone from Majidin. I just found Fortitude to get out of the stun to use that. Majidin could be an opening target now as well for Seth to destroy X. Yeah, I mean, unless they can get something going on to Envious very quickly, it's not going to look great. Uh, we'll be using that Serenity uh, to try to stick to Seth Curry. All right, now I think Seth Curry's getting more comfortable uh, with this setup right now. But just as I say that, we have the Leg Sweep immediately uh, into the Demon Hunter artifact. So it's Seth Curry taking what a ton of damage on? with the Arcade Torrent. Oh, look at that. Oh! Super low health. Imprison it, low health, any crowd control, break to silence him, touch of karma, oh, barely saves so Seth close. Curry. Great counter pressure from Set to Destroy X, oh, but they finally, they're, they're sinking their teeth in. Envious caught into a stun combo, down on 5%, oh, and fades. Wow, that fade. Barely hangs on. Ray of Hope should allow Envious to easily top off here well, in a few seconds. Tons of flash heals are spammed into that. Not even able yeah. to top off through the flash spam. Envious is still getting trained down, now caught into a DR stun. Guardian traded out as he desperately uh -oh. tries to stay alive. The counter pressure is fading. Vices desperately stuns the opponents to buy Envious time to ride the win back to the cart, getting desperately out of line of sight, but Seth immediately back on his heels. Major in trying to reconnect. Whoopi peeling him away. Brain freedoms him over. Envious baits the interrupt with the mic control, but Brain is moving in now. All three members gunning down Envious. How will he escape this pressure? Yeah, there's a touch of death on him. He's going to heal him himself back up to full. The touch of death doesn't do too much at that point as it pops another blessing of protection onto Seth Curry right there as a little knock away from Envious right there as a Major then tries to get over to him, does end up ripping him back, so Envious is going to be in trouble again. He does have that greater fade up, and uh, he's going to have Ray of Hope after this, if he can live for a little while longer. There's his stun. All right, he's going to greater fade out of that, and now he's going to have... Ooh, Seth now. Down at half. Rain shrink it out into an incapacitate. Vice's metamorphosis is paying off, but they need to find the kill. Touch of Karma is going to be available soon. Seth Curry ports away, but Brain, look at his mana. What happened to his mana? He's not going to be able to keep this up for much longer. Envious with a huge lead. They even swap some damage to Brain, forcing more mana out. They need to kill Envious within the next couple of seconds. Vice tries to peel them away, but it might have been a mistake. That Chaos Nova was incredibly DR'd. It was used way too preemptively. Now they're stacking up. Seth Curry has a perfect opportunity to leg sweep. Envious doing a great job, though, to continually kite away. So they can't can't set those up. Baiting the interrupt with the mind control. Major didn't falls for the bait. And now Envious can deal with the interrupts very easily. Brain is trying to drink behind the pillar. Oh, he's Somebody needs some. to stop that. Oh, no. He managed to get one tick at least. Brain put himself back into the fight. Darkness gets dropped to try and save Envious uh -oh. here in these potentially final moments. Envious is so low on health. Trying to stay alive through the train. Seth is forced to touch a karma. That's going to be an opening for Seth to destroy X. Brain needs to be careful and keep Seth Curry in his sights. Yeah, they do. Major did also oh, get a glow. Look at that swap onto him. That was so cool. Quick, and that damage coming out, that wasn't even Serenity. Yeah, Major Din still down at half. Brain sitting through a chastise. Envious trying to kite away to the cart. Seth portals back. Whoopi put his port on the port. Immediately goes back for that 1v1. Major Din is getting soloed by Vices. Any magic shell gets traded out. Brain getting that drink earlier was so critical, but the pressure is still mounting in favor of Seth to destroy. Seth rolling away, trying to escape. Brain gets stunned on his Avenging Wrath. Major Din dipping low as well. Envious just spamming out my controls to harass his opponents at low health. Major gets knocked behind the cart. Vices follows up. Brain barely connects a heal in time as Major Din hovers at 50%. Brain spams the last remaining amounts of his mana out to save him. Now they switch back to Seth Curry. Whoopi and Vices both connecting. Envious escapes to safety. Envious in a great position to take this match now. Yeah, there's a touch of death onto Envious, uh, but it's not going to do too much. The mind control is going to come back out as he doesn't look like he's... Oh, he immediately gets kicked on it. Uh, Major is still in trouble with both these melees right onto him. Seth Curry also getting double leg sweep. Both Major and Seth Curry. Brain still has one more uh, 
Plus, oh, no. sacrifice, I do believe. Envious is trying to be greedy and sit through this stun. He manages to do it. Chastise now onto Brain. If they can get a mind controller and imprison, Majin and Shirley will fall. They silence out, and Majin could fall. Will Brain be able to save him? Now interrupted into a fist of fury. Whoopi switches over to Brain. Tons of split pressure. Brain bubbles on 5%. Majin is still low. Set to destroy XR on fire as Brain struggles to keep his team alive. Dampening has now just started. Triple life sweep. Seth Curry tries to pull off the miracle. Will Envious go down in this burst attempt on 30? percent greater fate desperately kites away blessing of protection traded up for brain he's got no mana left his health is so low if anything even tickles him he's gonna fall over oh and envious is able to get one heal off there's the inner focus into the next heal all right a gigantic heal with that serenity mage and still down to half with brain stunned brain. in the oh this is not looking good for panda gaming at all oh! it is at one percent and it goes down day. he had his aura heal he was one second away wow. from maybe even topping himself there gaming today is set to destroy x have their sights on them. The gate's about to open. They're about to get out of these pipes and get this brawl underway. All right. So we go out again. Seth Curry is playing Whirling Dragon Punch instead of uh, Serenity. Um, so that means that his setups, he's going to have be able to chain two offensive cooldowns back to back. Touch of Death already coming out immediately onto Envious. The double leg sweep onto Vices and Envious there. Whoopi wasn't nearby. As Look at this damage onto Envious. This is what they need. And there goes Ram Hope first. As a uh, He's got a Serenity on top of it, so he should be okay. But again, look How at that great Ride the Wind. That was so fast with Ride the Wind. Envious manages to escape to safety. Seth Curry had to burn one of his major defensive cooldowns, but Panda Gaming seemed to be all out aggression in this match. Uh, they're gonna, Envious is going to need to be careful if they decide to play this aggressively throughout. Seth Curry is just running at the healer, start to finish. Uh, full Hammer of Justice has landed. There's Zwen. Seth Curry going for an all in specialization to try and take Envious out early on. But Majidin, he's just stuck so far away from the fight, trying to get back into it, clawing his way over, but Seth isn't going to be able to solo Envious, and Majidin needs to get his head in the game. Yeah, as uh, Majidin is finally going to make it back over, uh, but Envious is again, is going to have that great ride the wind there. It seems like uh, Whoopi is porting away, flying Serpent Kicking over to give him that runway to get away, and it's great. Uh, Brain sitting back, just pumping out those heals onto his target. All right, there we go, the double leg sweep. Let's see if they can do something to Envious out of this. However, Envious has everything up and ready for this. Oh, there's the Hammer of Justice. That's the third DR Sun. He's gonna uh, Ray Hope himself with the greater fade and the inner focus. Ooh, Seth now in trouble, barely portals away. Now rolling back to Brain's side, still getting just trained down. Cool. So much damage coming out from Set to Destroy. Brain barely gets that uh, sacrifice, you, sacrifice yeah. out in time. Uh, Brain is playing very greedy. He's known for being greedy, but that could have cost him the series. It really could have, and because Seth Curry didn't have Karma back up. He does now, but I mean, that was so close. The triple Fist of Fury stun, Envious getting down. Actually, Envious doesn't have anything except for Guardian Spirit on himself. All right. So that's the only thing he can save at this point. There we go. Now we see the big heal on himself with uh, with Serenity again. That ride the wind. He's able to get away from Seth Curry because Whoopi is just right on his back, snaring him the whole time. Get the freedom onto Seth Curry. He's really trying to stick to his target. There we go. Another stun onto Envious, but it was DR. Yeah, that was a huge mistake there from Brain. That could have been a potential major cooldown. Now Vices and Whoopi have an opportunity to turn this around. Metamorphosis has been popped. Mage and any magic shells immediately to negate any sort of bonus pressure on himself. Seth Curry seems to be the primary target still. They just want to force him away. They know that Seth basically only can kill Envious, so they right. keep the pressure on yeah. him, and he's forced away constantly. That buys Envious space to breathe and heal himself back up. Touch of Karma has been traded out. Triple leg sweep as Seth looks to close this match. Envious sees that coming. Trinkets out right away. Knocks away Brain down to the side. Manages to get a clean getaway, and Envious Man is on fire. Will they be able to take this man down? I'm not too sure. Yeah, and this is incredible. The, the Demon Hunter and the Windwalker can hit whatever they want because they know that they have to chase Envious, which means that here you go. Look at that. Seth Curry was trying to run over to Envious, knowing that he can't, and now it's just going to be the little battle in the center. Vice is trying to get a kill onto Seth Curry. They're splitting their attention. Whoopi is actually attacking Brain, trying to get some split damage. They stack up for a double Chaos Nova. Seth sees that mistake instantly, trinkets, and portals back behind the pillar. But Vices is relentless with the pressure. Whoopi is all over Brain. Every L Martyr heal is going to force Brain lower, so this split strategy could be very effective. Vices is still forcing Seth away. They don't stack up for the double stuns, and this split DPS strategy could buy Set to Destroy X a series. Yeah, I don't think Majinit is going to be able to solo Envious down there by himself. And every time that Seth Curry 
he goes to push up. Actually, here he goes. All right, he's going to roll over. Envious still has the mind control. Whole team is going to be on to Envious. They have to get an all-in kill, but he's going to greater fade, and it forces Seth Curry to run again, and this is a scary moment for Panda Gaming. They really haven't had too much success on Envious so far. Yep, now Envious pinned down behind the pillar. Whoopi backs him up, disappearing into the double knock. Nice play from Envious to set that up. That's going to be a clean getaway. Brain uses freedom on Majin, and that means Seth is left behind. Brain now caught into a chastise. Looks like they're switching their damage to Majin, trying to maybe cleave them down, but they get caught into the double leg. So he Vice's pre-metamorphosis and immune to stun. He was able to get Darkness down and save Envious. That was a nice play from Vice's. Envious should be able to restabilize. Now the pressure is mounting. Majin dipping low. Will Brain be able to save him in time? Caught in the mind control. Bubbles, but he falls off the side. He fell off the side in the bubbles. Now Majin so low. The oh, well, sacrifice barely saves him, but Seth is getting cleaved down. They can switch their attention very easily to Seth. He's trying to retreat away. Brain making way too many mistakes here in these final moments. He's burned through the rest of his mana. Vices is on fire. Majin is low. The split damage is everywhere, and Envious just can't die. Uh, yeah, this is rough. Seth Curry is trying to poke on to Envious right now. Majin gets around the pillar to connect back to him, but Whoopi is sitting there waiting for him. They know that all they have to do is stop every single go on Envious, and there is no way that this Panda Gaming can win. This is for the win in prison on the brain. Majin and Annie Magic shells, but Whoopi can cut right through that. My control spam's coming out. They interrupt that just into a chastise, and Majin, will he survive? Their series is on the line. Plus, he has protection. Envious purchases it off. Vices connects. Whoopi switches targets. Everybody is dead on the side of Panda Gaming. My control and low HP. Brain just can't handle of the pressure said destroy X looking to close this match out just a little bit more a little couple more points of damage death strike after death strike set portals back on top of them my controls them away vices is gunning down Majin. light of the martyrs all that brain can do but Majin hangs on by a thread chains of ice being spammed up but fist of fury connects brains avenging wrath just came up and he gets interrupted will be sidesteps over they stun him up brain has nothing they switch to him will he be able to hang on barely by a threat but no vices finds the kill and set to destroy X go for the throat Envious is so good. The blessing of protection. Uh, those are going to be nice immunities for his team to survive against this cleave setup that Method uh, Reborn is bringing. Uh, I think Method, I think, won the blind pick here. Yeah, I definitely think so as well. Rub Cub needs to end this game fast. If they drag it out too far, Sita will have the advantage. Rub Cub caught into a fear. Method Reborn pull the trigger, leading the charge towards Rosita. First see him down below half. Rub Cub now caught into imprison. Rosita desperately trying to run away, but Bean is relentless on his back. Rosita barely kiting to safety. Rub Cub now out of crowd control. Rosita looking to turn this around with a metamorphosis of his own, focusing down Snuts. See new trades out Ironbark to recover. Walla Bear getting cleaved down in the meantime. Cooldowns have been traded out. Sidu now caught into a fear. They switch some of their damage over to Bean. Rosita trying to train him down, but Bean cutting away equally. Rub Cub stunning out of that. Nice reverse magic instantly from Bean, but the damage is still mounting. Bean dipping low. Sidu struggling to heal with this damage right now. Bean actually caught into the full stun. This could be it. Blur has to activate there. Bean's going to be able to survive. He fully loads him up with pop. Rosita Joe landing a nice interrupt there into an imprison on Sidu. Panda Global has a lot of momentum right now. Bean is in a lot of trouble. Not too many defenses left trying to kite away. Sidu in a good position to heal him up though, but almost dipping down into execute range. Imprisonment over onto Rub Cub. Trying to turn around the pressure over onto Rosita. Rosita doing a good job kiting. Actually forced back in. Double Chaos Nova coming in from Bean. Both Demon Hunters in so much trouble. Rosita into execute range. Huge heal coming in from Rub Cub, stabilizing his HP. Yeah, now Bean and Snuts are on the back foot as both teams just keep cleaving into each other. Walla getting disarmed as Snuts dips into execute range. Snuts playing greedy there. No doubt by the sword. Cedar now caught into the imprison. They're looking to try and gun down Snuts. Stop by the sword. Finally traded out. Rub Cup moving in for that final stun. Looking for the kill early on from Panda Global. But that offensive push cost the health of his team. Walla is now low. Rosita is now low. Instant kicks on these fell barrages are putting Rosita behind. Walla trades out Die by the sword as Rub Cup is now caught into a full fear. Cedar trades out Iron Bark. Method Reborn are starting to restabilize. Rub Cub is running low on time. Will he be able to recover through this pressure? Everyone on his team is so low, but if someone could do it, it would be Rub Cub, but Rosita into execute range. Blessing of protection denies the kill. Now Sidu caught into a prison. Bean getting reversed on. Drop the darkness right before the stun. Rosita drops the darkness of his own, but now Rub Cub gets swapped to, and Bean cleaves him out. Nice swap there from Bean and Method Reborn claim game number one. That was such a beautiful game from Method Reborn, but honestly, very surprised. Kennedy here as the gates are about to open.
that means that Method Reborn, they just need to survive. They will win a long game, uh, hypothetically, especially if Rub Cub is playing aggressive with those purges. Uh, like Sid said, we'll have to see how they decide to uh, play this game out. Rizzi Jones charging in, trying to get some damage out on Snuts and Bean right away. Uh, we'll have to see if Jelly Bean's pushing oh. in. Looking for CC on CD right away. Rizzi Jones sort of getting all in at this point. Bean popping all his defensive cooldowns. A lot of pressure. Bursting shot over on a Sidu as well. Sidu actually iron barking, preemptively iron barking that CC chain. So well done by him. Now Panda Global turning their attention over onto Snuts. At the same time, Rub Cub getting swapped to, getting lower and lower. Uh, Beam doing an excellent job there with that Storm Bolt coming in from Snuts. Uh, Rub Cub having to top himself off against Blood Elson. Sidu charging on top of him. Both teams have a lot of pressure early on. Yeah, Sidu just stacked up for a ton of cleave from Jelly Bean. So Sidu's going to need to work to get his team back up. Panda Global have a lot of pressure. Nice wind shear onto Sidu. Snuts is dipping low. Bean is dipping low. Sidu might be cracking under the pressure. He's traded out all of his defensives and he's still not recovering. If they don't find the kill onto Rub Cub, they could be in trouble. Rub Cub manages to survive the stun. They're desperately trying to cling to life as Sidu kites away. Rosita relentlessly chasing after him. Everybody on Method Reborn is low on health. Sidu gets interrupted on the heel into a bursting shot, into a trap. Now they're getting cleaved down. Bean is still low. Sidu just cracking under the pressure. What can he do? There's so much damage coming out. Expixiate and Bean is looking to fall. Fell rushes into the pillar. Huge mistake. Gets gripped back. Will he be able to fall? Blade dances the execute. Dashes away but not able to survive it. Method Reborn get destroyed in game number two. Panda Global getting hype on the stage right now. That was such a good game for them. They had pressure from start to finish. That is going to be insane pressure for Rub Cup to deal with. Yeah, we'll have to see how this plays out for Panda Global in game number three on Astra Main's fall. I expect Panda Global to get aggressive very early on. They get rooted up. Sidu uh, looking to help Snuts out so he can get those VTs out very early on. If Snuts can get those VTs rolling on Whoa. every single member, uh, Sam I am actually going to get gripped in right away. Panda Global looking to get aggressive over onto him. Earthen Shield Totem is going to be committed by Sidu to slow down some of this damage. Sam hopping into bear form. And now Rosita Jones switching his attention over onto Snuts. Panda Global looking to get aggressive early on in this match. Yeah, but Jelly Beans is staying at the pillar. He knows if he goes out in the open that Sam I am will launch a full moon and just destroy him. So I like that Jelly Beans is playing it out cautious. He's using Feign Death to remove damage over time effects. So he went behind the pillar, Feign Death off the dots. They're trying to limit the amount of vampiric touches that Snuts can get by only having Rosita out in the middle. But with the Death Knight having the pet, there's going to be dot targets. It's going to be difficult for them to drag this out, but it seems like they are trying to dampen them out by hiding at the pillar. They're very afraid of getting blown up by Sam I am, so they're just hiding. See who sees that. He's just going to drink over and over no matter what, even if he goes down 2% mana. And as long as Sidu maintains his mana during this defensive playstyle, I think Method Reborn can take this. Rosita grips, snuts in. Bit of a peculiar move, really, with no other setup. And now that Death Grip isn't available, Snuts and Sam I am have free reign. Yeah, a lot of pressure going to be used over on Rosita Jones, but he gets Cyclone up and I think I, I mean if this game goes on long I think Panda Global might have the advantage as long as Rub Cub doesn't go oom they can stall it out till dampening I mean I wouldn't blame them they're in a really tough situation right now so that's getting lower and lower as he pushes in full bash over on a Rub Cub Method kind of realizes they don't want this game to go too long they push in get aggressive on Rub Cub silence out of the bash Astral Shift's going to be used AMZ committed as well so a lot of defensive cooldowns forced out by Panda Global Snuts now getting interrupted as he pushes in but this is a good spot for Method Reborn to be in I mean I think it's a smart trade from Rosita, any Magic Sound and Incarnation pair up very well together. Uh, and that's going to be the scariest moment is when Sam I am is in this armored chicken form. And it looks like he might be getting over aggressive. He's trying to chase down Rub Cup. Sidu's having a hard time staying in line of sight. Jelly Beans, though, now getting bursted down below half as they try to switch across the map and get away from Sam I am and Snuts. Rosita getting cycloned. He's kind of left behind in the middle of the map, but he does have defensive cooldowns. It should be all right. He's going to asphyxiate Snuts. And it does seem like Panda Global are playing for a stall game. They want to drag this fight out into dampening and know the shadow free self healing will be difficult to punch through and maybe with dampening they can find a win uh, I, like I said, I think it's smart. You can't blame them. Right now, they are behind on the blind picks. Now it's getting lower and lower. Gets interrupted on that VT. It's going to be crucial for Panda Global to be chain interrupting those VTs. So Snuts' damage is limited quite a bit. Sidu in a good position right now to heal up his team. Sam I am pushing in, trying to get aggressive once again. Dotting up Rub Cub. Wants to keep the pressure on Rub Cub. He gets silenced as well. This could be his Spirit Link totem. And DR Sun's going to be coming in. He's line of sighting, though. Now Snuts being pressured down quite a bit by Rosita Jones. No CC on Sidu for quite some time. I really think if Panda Global wants to score a kill here, they need to land those crowd controls and those interrupts on CD. They're just trying to burn his mana bar. Now landing a full trap. Snuts in trouble. Forced into the dispersion. If they can keep this crowd control chain going, maybe an asphyxiate doesn't seem to be available. Cedar trying to reposition. Snuts has recovered now. No dispersion. Cedar needs to preemptively use that Earthen Shield Totem for the next attack. Luckily, though, Jelly Beans and Rosita 
don't have very high pressure cooldowns to force them away. Cedar does drop Earth and Shield down regardless. He wants to get his team aggressive, but Sam I am getting scatter shot away, and Jelly Beans is focusing his crowd control onto the Boomkin to slow down the damage, trying to allow Rub Cub more time to breathe and heal. They had the mana lead, but look where Cedar is. He's far back. I would imagine he's trying to drink. Rub Cub jumps across the map to try and deny the drink. Manages to. Now eats the silence. And look, Jelly Beans immediately needs to hide back at the pillar. Rosita's trying to peel Snuts away with some stuns. They're desperately afraid of Sam I Am's incarnation right now. And Sam I Am's trying to gun for a kill. Dashing in, gets scattered away. Panda Global quiver in fear. Sidu still looking for a drink in the far back line. How will they stop the drink and not of die at the same time? Snuts is getting pressured. Rub Cub, though, gets cloned. Jelly Beans feigned death. Tries to immune the pressure. Trades out exhilaration there, I believe, to heal up through the incarnation. Surprisingly, no anti-magic zone. I think it could be placed very well here, and Rosita's being very greedy with it. Yeah, Jelly Beans trying to get some pressure, throwing aim shots over on his nuts as he gets lower and lower. He still has that life swap, though, uh, that he can toss over onto his teammates. It's a PLC do really, with this positioning advantage, I mean, at some point, Method of Born needs to play a little bit more passive. Let C2 drink up, because he is behind on mana at this point of the game. Everyone from Panic Global is rotting lower and lower. True Shot Aura has been committed. Full Moon going to be used to get shocked up there by Rub Cub. Good job by Rub Cub. Silence now over on Rub Cub. Rosita getting lower and lower. No AMS going to be available. Uh, Method of Born might have an opportunity here, but uh, Jelly Bean's doing a good job with the counter fire over onto Snuts. Unfortunately, not able to connect too much damage. C2 is still in a good spot to heal him up, not getting interrupted. But like you said, Sid, he might just be playing Ooh. for this blue bar. Full bash landed on Jelly Beans as Sam I Am looks to sink his teeth in. Nice cyclone on low HP. Sam I Am now switches his attention to Rub Cub. Rub Cub sees it coming, uses Astral Shift. Scatter shot on Sam I Am. Rub Cub trying to spam heal back to full HP, dispelling the dots off as well. It's important that they stay ahead of the damage over time effects. Sam I Am and Snuts both playing with heavy dots. Sam I Am now getting cleaved down as he may have pushed too far forward. Trades out Barkskin. Cedar's running out of mana. Jelly Beans is crossing the map. Is he going to be able to get over to Cedar or is he just trying to reposition is the question. Doesn't look like he wants to get anywhere near Sidu. Fain deaths off the dots. Rosita though into a mind bomb. Snuts and Sam I Am are setting up for some burst. Not able to get it. The interrupts from Jelly Beans, Rub Cub, and Rosita have been great. Rotated onto Sam I Am, interrupting critical spells over and over. I like these scatter shots on the damage DPS as well to slow down the damage. That's the only reason Rub Cub's mana is even on par with Sidu's. Sidu's kept in combat, but Sam I Am moves in. Pops the incarnation, but he might overextend. With no bark skin going behind his pillar, it might be a deadly move. Sidu's trying to get in position to heal him back up. Sam I Am's going all in for the win. Silence on to Rub Cub, but that anti-magic zone was well placed from Rosita. Denied so much pressure. Yeah, Rub Cub still has his ascendants as well. That's going to be huge for his team to recover from the spread pressure coming in from Method Reborn. Dampening has kicked in. We're at 6%. Rosita getting lower and lower, but Earthen Shield Totem has been committed as well as the AMS, and now Sam could be in a little bit of trouble getting into that bear form. See, throwing the Earth Shield over onto him to prevent some of this incoming damage. Rosita Jones going to be using that AMS. Wants to get aggressive over onto Snuts, getting him lower and lower, but Snuts still has every single defensive cooldown available. Rub Cub is the CD mana relatively even Tito is a little bit behind right now but Rub Cub having to expend much more mana at this point in the game it seems like it's so not still just sitting in the middle of the map trying to PV out as much damage as possible uh, Rosita Jones in a good spot though as that death knight you're not too scared of this magic damage Ooh, Rub Cub sitting down for a drink 50 70 80 is that 100% mana almost from Rub Cub Cedar moved over way too late now with that mana Rub Cub just got they need to go for a push dampening is in this is going to be their only opportunity Rub Cub though getting solar beam Rosita getting set up on Sam I'm trying to reverse the pressure in favor but he's getting cleaved down will Panda Global swing the series in their favor CD is trying to drink he's trying to play this greedy they use void shift to try and land a drink CD is getting mana Rosita wasn't able to stop it we're tied on mana still an even ball game Rosita getting blown up snuts is low HP mind bomb lands jelly beans retreats away Rosita now the only member overextended, has any magic shell, but that greedy drink from Sidu put himself and his team back in this game. I feel like they had no choice at that point. I think it was smart for them to trade out the Void Shift, the life swap for Sidu to get some mana. If they didn't do that, they would have surely lost this game. Now he's actually head on mana at this point in the game. Rub Cub uh, still positioned back. Rosita Jones charging in, trying to get out damage. We have 15% damage. It's going to become a nightmare for both of these shamans very, very shortly. Sam I'm getting interrupted on that cyclone. He's trying to charge in, get the pressure over onto Jelly and Rub Cub once again. But Sam I Am may have overextended. He doesn't have bark skin. It's getting exploded lower and lower. Spirit Link Totem has been used by Sidu. That was such a close call.
Yeah, Sidhu in a hard recovery moment, but now the pressure is mounted. Sam I am damage is sinking in, and Rosita could go down. Anti Magic Shell buys him a couple seconds. Anti Magic Zone traded out. The entire team hiding in that pur purple bubble. Sam I am looking for a full moon. If this full moon connects onto anyone, it could just destroy them. Sam I am, though, I can't help but feel is too aggressive. Constantly overextending and line of sighting Sidhu, almost throwing the match there. If he makes that mistake again deep into dampening, it could be it. Yeah, it could be it. Without the Spirit Link Totem to fall back on. Snuts, though, That's getting nuts. low as well. Might be dispersed. Virgin. Line Bomb was used over on Rosita, trying to slow down some of his damage. That's going to be kiting back, forced uh, to be, play defensive at this point in the game. Jellybean's still just trying to throw out some damage. Sam I am charged in once again. Jellybean's going to be turning his attention over to him. True shot or not going to be up for quite some time. Vampiric Embrace is going to be used by Snuts to help stabilize his team's HP. If we look at mana, both healers are relatively even at around 25% mana at this point of the game. Rosita Jones getting lower and lower, though. No defensive cooldowns left. Rub come in a good spot, though, throwing out those healing waves. Rosita Jones retreats with that Wraith Walk. Uh, but at this point, Rub Cub's going to have a hard time topping off his team. Yeah, they're split up. They grip Snuts in. They stun him as well, trying to catch Sidhu off guard. But see, Jelly Beans is far away from Rub Cub. Rub Cub's caught in the root, but Snuts is getting bursted. Tons of damage coming up. Really surprising to not see the dispersion there. Ko's call for Snuts. He's trying to play it greedy, but dampening is so high that Shadow Priest self healing is starting to get lower. Rub Cub jumping back over to Jelly Beans, trying to reconvene, maybe sit down for a drink. Sidhu sees that drink, jumps into the middle of the map, looking for an Earthbind Toad and put Rub Cub in combat. But now he left Snuts in the back line. So much pressure from Rosita. Full moon attempt gets Scattershot away. Huge damage. Snuts is trying to reverse it. Rub Cub pushes up. Up. Panda Global are going all in for the win. Will they be able to find the pressure and the kill in time? Sidhu spamming out healing wave after healing wave. Dampening is mounting up. Sidhu's team is starting to fall behind. True Shot is hot. Jellybeans is going in for the kill. Yeah, Jellybeans charging in right now. You can see he wants to get those aim shots off with that True Shot. Or Rosita Jones looking to get aggressive as well. Method Reborn in full retreat. Exfixiate over on his Nazi Trinkets out. Trying to keep up those vampire touches. Keep that pressure over onto everyone. Oh, no. no bash over onto Rub Cub. But Snuts could be in a little bit of trouble right now. Jelly Beans also needs to potentially kite away. He's taking a lot of damage right now. Rub Cub going to be dispelling him. Rosita Jones using the AMS. Jelly Beans getting lower and lower, though. If they can't find the damage. Jelly Beans doing a great job. Line of sighting. And now Snuts is caught in the middle of the map. This could be dispersion. See who has no mana left at this point of the game. This is actually looking really good for Panda Global. Root Beam going to be used over onto Rub Cub. Rosita Jones in a position. No AMS available. Might have to use that Icebound 14 to prevent some of this damage. Now Panda Global. Falling behind. Yeah, Sidhu sneaking in a drink in the back line. Snuts needs to maybe trade out Dispersion for that drink. Rub Cub's trying to cross the map to stop it, but now that he's in the open, Sam I am just destroying him. Gets gripped on that full moon. Snuts uses Dispersion. Nobody got any mana. Both Shaman's completely tapped. We're into deep dampening at this point. This is going to be all or nothing. Any magic zone. Rosita wants to stay aggressive. Stay on Snuts' heels. Wants to put him down. Rub Cub's sitting through a clone into a full bash. Jelly Beans has to trade out Aspect of the Turtle. Will Jelly Beans go all in for the kill, or will they try to run away? Is a question. Rub Cub gets forced back. Snuts oh. is still getting destroyed. Son of the Sidhu, Snuts can easily fall. Panda Global looks to close this. Spirit Link Totem finds him a second. Rub Cub jumps in, drops his Spirit Link, and now Panda Global are on the back foot. Full Moon connects. Silence onto the Ascendants. Everybody is dipping low. Rub Cub on the run, but Snuts is getting cleaved down as well. Both teams under so much pressure. Who will fall first? Jelly Beans feign deaths off the dots. Snuts is in trouble. Rosita gets cloned. That buys him a couple more seconds to get a couple healing surges. Solar Beam lands under Rub Cub. Jelly Beans is still snow. So low. Both teams can easily fall still. At this moment, I have no idea how the Shamans are pulling this off to keep their teams alive. Snuts could fall. We only interrupt Sidhu. Snuts falls. Rub Cub could fall as well, Elliot. Yeah, Rub Cub's in a little bit of trouble. He needs to line of sight. Jellybean's getting lower and lower. Method not out of it yet. 40% dampening, but it looks like Panda Global has stabilized. Sam I am trying desperately to charge in. Incarnate keep up the pressure. Incarnate in 10 seconds. Whoa. Like you said, he gets fully stunned, though, and with Sidhu having no mana, that should just be it. Panda Global doing the impossible on their count. Getting counterpicked in that game. Game. They have now brought it up to two to one, switching the series in their favor. Listen to them, man. Just like that, we oh. talked about how important the first game was. That is complete. To make sure they realize they're playing against an assassination rogue and arcane mage. If you split yourselves up from those two targets, then you, they're going to be doing significantly less damage. Uh, I'm curious to see how they play it out. I also wonder how much damage a DK and a marksmanship hunter do to an arcane mage. Maybe Sam I'm just dies instantly. Uh, we we'll have to wait and see as Snuts opens up with a triple garrote. Amazing start for Snuts. That's going to boost his damage a lot. They're stacked up for Fan of Knives. Now Sam I'm just really needs to get in there, get his uh, arcane stacks going. Sidhu trinkets out of X68 very early on. Gets interrupted on his heal. If Jellybeans can follow that up, maybe Sam I'm could be in trouble. Use this 
temporal shield. They purge that off. See, so but what is going on with Rub Cup? So much damage going on there from Sutsu Semi as they reverse the pressure. Everyone is going down. This is what we are expecting from Method Reborn. Rub Cup now sitting through the blind. Rosita really not responding in time. Now finally recovering. The blind is over. Rub Cup pops Ascendance with Ascendance boosts his AoE healing. Should be able to restabilize through the initial assault. And now Panda Global need to get their hands dirty. Yeah, that was Arcane Power and that Vendetta. Rub Cup almost exploded with that first swap. Uh, but like you said, Panda Global, they need to get aggressive right now. If they can't find pressure at this moment, it's going to be so difficult for them. But everyone is rotting lower and lower. Sentence has already been used. Kidney shot onto Rub Cup. Rosita Jones doesn't really have anything left defensively. But Sam, I am getting lower and lower. Uses the Ice Block. Good job. Needs to stay, keep himself alive, obviously. Full kick over on a Rub Cup. Snuts just killing everyone right now. Full Ribbon String over on the Snuts. It's going to get taken off. And now, oh. Method Reborn getting aggressive once again. Rosita Jones getting lower and lower. Rub Cup just cannot heal through this pressure. Sam, I am dipping low as well. They're racing against the Tabora Shield. Can they rate, win the race? No. Sam, I am bounces back. And now Rub Cup and his entire team on the back foot. Unless they can find the kill right here and now in Sam, I am. I have no idea how Rub Cup is going to restabilize. They've got good crowd control on c -Doo. They land the trap. Sam, I am in a 2v3. Rosita gets kidney shot away. Good peels from Snuts. Constant pressure following that up as well. Rub Cup is almost tapped on mana. Triple Arcane Explosions. Gift of the Queen from Rub Cup. Hit three players to try and boost them back. Sam, I am gets bursted. Jelly Beans gunning for the kill. Mind freeze on c -Doo and Sam, I am falls. Snuts can try and reverse this though with all three members stacked up. Uh, I'm not sure if they're going to play that out or not there. Play out. Traditionally, a lot of times, um, the team that swaps the enemy team's wrestler shaman first ends up having a little bit of a pressure advantage. It's also interesting because although the Warlock seems like a good target to hit, all you're really doing is shutting down some of their actual casted abilities. And as some of us know, casted abilities for Warlocks aren't really required in order for them to deal damage. But we do see Wealthy Man starting right off on Absurge. Why wait to swap when you could just invest all in immediately with Vendetta? He does get feared off. Absurge gets silenced away. Still gets a stun on Wealthy Man to get a little bit of heal. Meanwhile, WizK trying to get some damage rolling. And Smexen charging all the way in to go on a Cubsy. Yeah, Wealthy Man with that Vendetta uh, just about to wear off. He wasn't able to get as much as he really wanted out of that. Did manage to pull out the Earth and Shield Totem, uh, but the rest of his team did a good job of sort of pulling back uh, and pulling uh, pulling uh, the rest of his enemies away. Now, uh, it looks like Chanimal actually playing a little Ring Around the Rosie with Smexen right now. He does fear the Smexicute. Absurge once again with Wealthy Man on him, taking some hits there. Gets kicked on his Healing Wave. That's a, a very, very nice kick coming out from Wealthy Man there. Uh, to be able to hit that so quickly. And now Absurge is forced to drop one of his totems in response. Now all three members of Method Awakened are starting to get a little bit low on health here. They're going to have to be kind of careful uh, because well, obviously with the Resto Shaman, one of the biggest cooldowns is the, uh, uh, excuse me, the Spirit Link totem, but it just doesn't do anything if everybody's low already. Yeah, this is looking really tough so far for Method Awakened. They are definitely getting the strategy they talked about earlier, where they're pretty much just sicking Wealthy Man on Absturge, and we're seeing the effects of that across the health pools. They're letting Chanimal sit comfortably behind the pillar and cast away on Smexen, move forward and even get some dots on WizK, whereas Smexen is really unable to connect to Chanimal and is just dotting and rotting the entire time behind the pillar. This is looking pretty tough. Yeah, we did see uh, one of WizK's trademark moves there, the cheeky little seduce coming out. He likes to swap his pets around in the middle of fights and be able to toss out a little bit of extra CC like that. Wealthy Man could be in a little trouble here. He wants to stay aggressive. He jumps over onto Absurge, getting a bunch of damage into Absurge. Smex it also low on the other side of the map. Now comes back over to reconnect, trying to put some damage into Wealthy Man. Wealthy Man having to pop both his Cloak of Shadows and his Evasion right there. Does not have his uh, Vanish available. He could be in a lot of trouble as soon as these cooldowns fall off. This is exactly what I'd like to see from Smex in here. Do not hesitate to swap to the Rogue, pull Cubsy away from the pillar, and then swap over to Cubsy. Now, but we're seeing a huge swap and a kidney oh. shot on Absturge. Wealthy Man is giving him the business, forcing the link as well. Absturge is definitely gonna have to pop some cooldowns here to recover from that. Yeah, neither one of these teams is pulling any punches right now. They are both going hyper aggressive. Absturge finally gets an opportunity to get out of line of sight, pop his ascendance and get some healing out on his team. Gonna be able to stabilize Method Awaken. Cubsy responding with his own Ascendance to top his team off. Cubs, he gets caught into a fear, though, coming out from WizK. Wealthy Man trying to get aggressive once again. Connecting over onto Absurge here. He's got the kidney shot off and the full seduce, I believe, or a blind out on the Smex in there. That was actually the blind. Uh, WizK was CC'd there as well. That gave Wealthy Man plenty of time to pump some damage into Absurge, and you're starting to see the results of that in Absurge's mana. WizK now a little bit low as well. Swapping over to that Fell Hunter, going to try and start getting some more interrupts out, feeling like maybe they need to start getting more uh, more lockouts on, probably on Cubsy, to be able to get some damage going here. Yeah, Method Awakens health bars are looking a little worse for the wear than frogs in a pond, but look at the split that's occurring here. Smexen is behind the pillar, once again pressuring Cubsy, whereas 
uh, Wiz K is content to continue to dot Wealthy Man, and Wealthy Man does have his Cloak of Shadows, but does not have Evasion, but in Vendetta's up, he's got his cooldowns rolling. Let's see if Absurge can recover from this pressure. Yeah, he's getting so low on mana right now, it's gonna be really, really tough for Absurge to be able to keep his team aggressive like this. Both Wiz K and Absurge using that Demonic Gateway to get the hell out of dodge, excuse me. Uh, Mexen, Mexen now coming over as well, trying to put as much damage as he can. Wealthy Man just being relentless in his pursuit of Absurge. He doesn't even care that there's anybody else in the arena. He is trying to kill Absurge as best he can. And we're, again, seeing the results on Absurge's mana bar. Uh, Absurge gets spell locked there for just a second, getting a little bit lower on health. Now Wiz K in some trouble as well. The full kidney comes out on Absurge. They could be able to kill both players at the same time. Absurge forced to drop his healing totem. Wiz K having to use his unending resolve as well. Frogs in the Pond is starting to look really, really strong in this matchup. Yes, Mex in classic style seems to be preferring the double time talent, which allows him to have two charges on a charge, right? And then he's also got a produced cooldown on his charge, but he doesn't have his reliable stun to drop on Wealthy Man to really punish those swaps. But it looks like that mobility might just come in handy right now as Channel gates across the map but Spexen wisely opts to just go ahead and hit Cubsy in the middle of the map, keep that pressure rolling, and let that WLS damage tick. Yeah, Chanimal finally catches a big heal from Cubsy there just before Cubsy gets locked out. A little bit of a, uh, a lucky break or possibly just some good timing there from Frogs in a Pond. Cubsy locked out once again, but they're just constantly keeping that pressure rolling onto Method Awaken. Uh, this is looking so close at this particular moment in time. Absurds, though, in the kidney shot. Nice fear comes out from WizK just to break that up for just a split second. It's going to give Absurds just enough time to get away, but isn't enough. He's getting so low right now. He has nothing left available. He's got his Spirit Link. Is he going to be able to use it, or is the, uh, it may actually be an error with the Indicator? It does not look like he actually has that Spirit Link available. So Healing Wave is about all he's got going for him right now. Jumps into Dog Form, jumps into the Gateway, hangs out behind the pillow over here, and somehow Absurge has survived that. Unbelievable peels by Smex in there, and he's turning the pressure around once again. Wealthy Man, if he drops an Execute Range, this could be very scary. He's got his Cloak of Shadows up right now. No dot pressure, but Smex in is not afraid to deal out some physical damage here. The Spirit Link goes down. Health bars don't move that much at all. Wealthy Man still looking to apply some pressure, trying to stay with his healer, trying to stay in line of sight. Meanwhile, Chanimal is cranking out the dots. This could look very, very scary for Method Awaken, even though they do seem to be in the aggressive position here. Neither Shaman has had any mana for the past, like, three hours of this particular game. I don't know what's going on here. Uh, both Ascendances have now fallen off. Both healers were using those just a second ago to top their teams off. Uh, now Frogs and Upon seems to have come out of that on the upper end. However, Wealthy Man still under a lot of pressure, getting low. He has no defensive cooldown available for himself. Cubsy's locked out. Wealthy Man could just die to a Smexicute right here. Finally actually manages to port out of there at the last second. Now Smexin may be in some trouble having to use his die by the sword there. Uh, Absurge getting over here out of line of sight, but hey, hello, it's Wealthy Man here once again with a kidney shot. How's it going? Absurge still taking tons of damage. Smexin now super low. They're swapping over to Smexin. Smexin's gonna have to gateway out of there. Absurge is stuck behind him though. Wealthy Man again with that constant pressure. He's having to gateway away. Chanimal keeping up those dots going like crazy. Absurge could just die to just dot damage right here. Does manage to get the Spirit Link totem out, but Smexen wasn't in it. Smexen trying to get over there. Does he actually manage to connect? No! The Spirit Link wore off before he was actually able to get there. Smexen's so low on health right now. Is he going to be able to actually survive through this? Kidney shot on the Absurge. Smexen, how are you still alive? Absurge coming out of this with no health once again as well. Whiskey's no health. No one on Method Awaken has any health. How is anyone still in this game? Absurge finally falls. Holy crap! <laughs> wow! I wow! All right, so Frogs in the Pond won that one. <laughs> because on one hand, you could just have one Shaman in one tomb, the other Shaman in the other tomb, and the melee hitting the Shaman and seeing how that goes. But I am very curious to see if one team will actually decide to take the tomb, giving the Warlock and the Shaman line of sight advantage to get those dots out and get those purges out as well, which could definitely help them build a lead early in this game. Yeah, nice quick double fear there coming out from Smexen onto both Cubsy and Chanimal, just trying to get something going right away. Meanwhile, Wealthy Man introducing himself to his old friend Absturge, uh, getting a nice quick kidney shot into a kick. Absturge actually already in some trouble here. May have to use his Astral Shift to survive through this. Looks like he will finally be able to break through the uh, the different interrupts that Wealthy Man was using to get some heals off. Wealthy Man's gonna go ahead and peel away, start putting some damage into Chanimal. Looks like that's who they're gonna want to, excuse me, go, uh, some damage into Wiz K. Looks like that's who they're gonna wanna go on here. But then once again, as soon as I say that, back Back over on Absurge once again. Yeah, Absurge getting caught in the kidney there, dropping down around 30% health. Wealthy Man definitely seems very intent on not letting Absurge have any fun right here, already forcing the Ascendance. Meanwhile, Wizk is also dropping down low. Smexen is trying to stop some of Chanimal's damage, but as we talked about before, locks don't really have to cast in order to deal damage. Smexen did go the Stormbolt this time when they're able to catch Wealthy Man in a stun. 
followed up by another stun. However, they were, they were a little bit overlapped. I'd like to see those you, be chained together a little bit more. But we already saw the effects that it has just shortly thereafter. Chain wall dropping down low. Wealthy man dropping down low. This is going to definitely knock Cubsy out of his comfort zone. Yeah, definitely. You can see he's actually struggling a little bit more to keep his team aggressive than he was in the last match. And a lot of that is due to the fact that this map is allowing Method Awaken to stay so much more aggressive, allowing Smexin in particular to just stick on his targets. Wealthy man once again reconnecting over onto Absurge. That's going to be his MO for pretty much this entire game. But I like these quick swaps that they keep making over onto both Smexin and Wizkay. In fact, Smexin could be in some trouble right now. He's actually having to run back across over to Absurge. But Absurge is caught into that full kidney shot. Smexin is getting super low right now. If they can make a sw quick swap onto him somehow, they might be able to kill. He does come out with the die by the sword, which should keep him alive. Absurge having to use the astral shift as well. So he should be able to survive through this. But that was a nice move there by Frogs and Hunt. Yeah, just look at the cooldowns between these two shamans. Absurge is definitely running low. He's currently only has his Spirit Link available. And Smexin is actually going to leap fear. Cubsy, Storm Boat, Wealthy Man. This could be it. It does force Wealthy Man's Trinket, which is not something that we've seen before. Once again, there's swaps forcing Trinkets for Method Awaken this time. It's just a matter of can they survive long enough to make more swaps like that. Absurge caught the kidney shot. This could be it. If Chanimal gets line of sight here. Oh, he feared. It was an excellent fear by Wizk, which just allows Absurge to get the Spirit Link down here. Let's get Spell Lock there. Smexin opting to go into Battle Stance. Really looking to get aggressive on Wealthy Man here. Yeah, definitely. Method Awaken once again telling the same story of no health. They're all super low right now. Absurge did use his Spirit Link there as well. Uh, I apologize. There's a, a slight glitch in the uh, display. It's not going to actually show the cooldown of Spirit Link, but it was used. Absurge once again caught into a stun. Both Smexin and Wizk are super low. If Chanimal can connect while Wealthy Man is keeping Absurge disconnected, uh, they could be able to get a kill on a Smexin right here. Absurge does manage to get a quick heal off on a Smexin. Wizk now super low as well. Uh, they're both taking tons and tons of damage right now. Absurge somehow keeping his team alive through this constant pressure. Yeah, Shamans a lot of times are able to heal pretty well as long as they can keep themselves high health and then they can rip tide down. But with the constant pressure from Wealthy Man, Absurge oh. is caught consistently in low health, eats another cheap shot, and just gets taken down. My goodness, frogs in a pond mean business. They are looking dominant. This was Method Awakens' map pick, but it's going to be the victory for frogs in the pond. They are now on match. The only problem there is that by doing so, they let Chanimal have free reign of the battlefield with Wizk trying to dot as much as possible. And a lot of times, in order to actually take down a rogue, it has to be done in burst damage fashion in a stun. And even though uh, Wizk is cranking out some serious affliction more like DPS, burst is not exactly the name of the game for an Affliction Lock. Yeah, definitely. It's more about that spread pressure, like you were saying, uh, which we've seen uh, Chanimal doing, uh, are able to get much more benefit out of that in this series so far. So we'll have to see how things work out here. Wealthy Man, once again, just hanging out with Absurge. He's like, uh, he's like that, that, you know that friend you have that you always hang out with at your caster desk? Uh, and he's always like just around, but you know, sometimes he's, I'm just, I'm just ripping out Rich right now. How you doing, bro? <laughs> Uh, but yeah, Wealthy Man currently pulling a Rich Campbell on F Surge at the moment. I'm, I'm falling apart, man. You don't, you don't want to pull a Rich Campbell in the arena if you want to win, I will say that. <laughs> Yeah, we saw the full kidney by Wealthy Man onto Absurge, really just getting the pressure started here. Wizk once again disconnected from Absurge. I'd like to see Wizk maybe play a little bit closer to Absurge. R rather than trying to go offensive, really work on keeping the fears on Wealthy Man, keeping that damage rolling. But as I say that, it seems like the Method Awakened strategy is working out just fine. Smexin getting some serious pressure going on Channel right now. And if you look across the map, Wealthy Man is still at half health as well. If Smexin decides to make that swap right now, it could be a game ending play. Yeah, we saw a, it looked like a blind trying to go out there, almost getting immediately broken onto, I believe it was on Cubsy uh, just a second ago. Wealthy Man, once again, with those kidney shots onto Absurge, just uh, basically all he's doing in this entire game is just making it so that Absurge never gets an opportunity to completely top off at least one of the members of his team. And we're currently seeing that with Smexin's health. He's sitting at about half, and he's been there for a while. Absurge just has not had time to actually top people off. Uh, now Absurge, once again, taking some pressure. Again, it's just from Wealthy Man sitting behind over there. No, excuse me, Channel actually had rejoined with him. Absurge now inside that kidney shot. Could be in a lot of trouble right here. Kidney shot's going to wear off. Is he going to be able to get some sort of cooldown out to save himself? Doesn't look like, oh, no, excuse me. He did actually use the Earth and Shield Totem. That'll keep him alive for now, but it's not the strongest cooldown, so he's going to have to follow it up with the Astral Shift. And now Absurge should be able to survive through this, but that's a lot of cooldowns he just had to use. Yeah, Earth and Shield definitely does a good job of reduction. So does the, the Shaman Wall. However, he needs health right now and keeps getting interrupted consistently. Kicked into kidney shot. Absurge should go down here. Beautiful fear by Smexin once again. By his Shaman Absurge time to drop that spirit link and keep this game going just a little bit longer.
Yeah, he is. He has managed to stabilize once again. Fear lands on the Cubsy there for just a second. Method Awaken clearly trying to find some sort of a window to be able to turn something around. Wealthy Man is getting a little bit low. He'll have his Cloak of Shadows up here in a couple of seconds. It's now available. Immediately uses that Cloak of Shadows so he can stay aggressive onto Wealthy, or excuse me, onto Absurge. Uh, Absurge now into the Kidney Shot once again. Is there any way that he can possibly survive through this? He's somehow still alive. The Cheap Shot follow up. He's going to use the Demonic Gateway. He's going to be able to get out of there. Toss himself a couple of healing surges behind that, that pillar. Absurge somehow once again surviving by the skin of his teeth in that situation. Now turning it around on the Wealthy Man. He's had to use his evasion and he's trying to once again get some line of sight onto Absurge. Absurge knows what's coming for him. He can hear the hear Wealthy Man knocking. He's trying to stay away as best as he can. Uh, and so far so good actually. He's managed to uh, kite Wealthy Man for quite some time. Wealthy Man now having, uh, excuse me, having to actually stick onto Smexin instead. This is one of the first times we've actually seen Wealthy Man peeled completely off of Absurge. And you can see how much of an effect it has for Method Awakens team. However, once again, Absurge gets caught into a kidney shot. Same as what we've seen consistently. Wealthy Man is very content to continue that pressure. Although Smexin behind the pillar pops, Battle Cry gets blind on his Battle Cry. Does break the dots, it looks like. He's able to con consistently get some pressure on Wealthy Man. They're leaving Channel alone for a moment, but they say, you know what? A little bit too much dot pressure can definitely spell bad news for us. With our backs against the wall, we really can't afford to let Channel with a, with his BlizzCon winning experience get all his dots on us. But Wealthy Man gets disarmed here, only has Cloak of Shadows to avoid that execute, but he's still almost in range. Smexon might be able to get the Colossus Smash. Oh. Wealthy Man shadow steps to Channel, which gives Cubsy a chance to Spirit Link. Really slick play by Wealthy Man there. Yeah, that was actually, I think Cubsy actually uh, was the first Spirit Link. I don't think Absurge has actually had to use his just yet. Uh, and with the mana being relatively even between the two of them, uh, that actually means that this story is a little bit closer than it might look right now. Uh, Cubsy getting a little bit low right now, trying to get those healing waves off, but Smexin is able to reconnect. Cubsy just uses them on a gateway. He's got to use the Astral Ship. It's fallen off now, though. Cubsy could be in a lot of trouble right here. He's in execute range. Are we going to get the Smexicute right here? He's getting so low. Absurd's now using his Ascendance to keep it going, and there it is. Oh, Cubsy's baby, let's go. We got a series. That was amazing. Did you see the interrupt chain on Cubsy there at the end, though? So Shamans That's... definitely have some serious healing output, but when they get chain interrupted like that, it... on Arena definitely, I think, plays into the hands of Frogs in a Pond. When we've seen Method Awaken on their back foot, it's when Smexon can't connect and Wealthy Man can't. So this is going to be a situation where they're definitely going to have to get the opener they're looking for, and Method Awaken is going to have to use the tactical defense that they've used that last game to try to keep Wealthy Man away from Absurge. But we do see Wealthy Man once again opening up on Absurge with a silence into Kidney Shot with the damage rolling. We haven't seen the Vendetta committed yet, which is something different than we've seen in the past. I can just feel Absurge like sighing from here as Wealthy Man opens up onto him once again. But look at this. He's actually managed to root Wealthy Man out of line of sight, and Absurge is just off in dog form, being completely happy out in the middle of the map. Wealthy Man now trying to uh, reconnect onto him, but this is actually a great way to deal with this opener from Method Awaken. They've been able to get Wealthy Man away. Absurge is feeling totally fine. He's now got that kidney shot going once again, uh, but that's a lot of the initial uh, push potential loss from Frogs in the Pond. Yes, Mexican is playing very aggressively there. You actually saw him trinket a root. He says, that I have to connect <laughs> to this target, and even then, it's so rough because he's playing once again Tumble Dime and still can't reach Cubsy, but Wealthy Man on the other side of the map is forcing at the Earth and Shield totem on Absurge, but it looks like they're making a swap over to Cubsy here. Smexit and WizK both content to deal some serious damage to Cubsy here. Cubsy here looking for a pillar, dropping his own Earth Shield totem and getting a few casts off. Yeah, we've actually seen both Infernals now used from both Warlocks at this point as well. Wealthy Man starting to get a little bit low and actually looking at the health bars. This is telling a very, very different story from the last two games thus far. Chanimal now getting pretty low. He's going to have to use his Unending Resolve. That may be the first Unending Resolve I've actually seen him use in this series. Uh, he's still taking a little bit of damage. Cubsy now caught into, I believe that's a Seduce. Uh, yeah, it would be coming out from Whiskey there again with the, those cheeky little pet swaps. Uh, got that Seduce out and followed it up with a Fear. Absurge, though, having to run once again. He's now gotten himself out of line of sight, but here's the thing. He's gotten himself so far away from his team that this is now putting, even though he's he's going to be able to survive through Wealthy Man here, no problem. That's put Smexin and WizK in a little bit of danger. Excuse me, as I say, he can survive through it. He's actually getting really, really low. Having to use the Ascendance there, Wealthy Man just able to put out so much damage just on his own, uh, trying to, uh, he looked like he was able to bait out the interrupt there, no problem. And now he's actually going to be out of line of sight once again. He actually pulled away. Wealthy Man was running back over. Looked like they were trying to maybe make something happen on a WizK there, uh, but WizK seems to be stable for the time. 
time being. One of the things that's so tough about kiting Wealthy Man successfully is that it actually allows Wealthy Man to get restelts. So not only is he able to open with a kidney, he's able to open with a Garot kidney, which is even more CC that prevents Absurd from healing the essential heals that he needs to keep his health up. Meanwhile, WizK is actually dropping down very low. Earth and Shield Totem is going to force Method Awaken to group up on this pillar, which is really, really tough because Chanimal is, ha is having free reign to crank out those dots. But we also see another Earth and Shield Totem, but Wealthy Man is deciding to... Although Earth and Shield Totem's helpful, a worry hitting me is not, so he's gonna get out of there and try to look to reconnect, but Absturge is just happily healing behind the pillar while Smexen is continuing to get kited. This is a very different game than we've seen before. Yeah, and I think we're seeing Wealthy Man actually having to play a lot more defensive. It, it's it's looked a few times like he's in a lot of trouble. He's actually just using his off, or excuse me his defensive cooldowns to stay aggressive, because he's just watching what's going on so that he can pull back if he needs to. But he has to pull back so far when that actually does happen. We now see Smexen getting a little bit low on health there, chasing down Cubsy, but Cubsy's gonna just go ahead and use that demonic gateway to get back out of there. Wealthy Man actually just having to run across the center of the map, and Smexen not allowing him to. Smexen is still pretty low though. Absurd should be able to keep him up just fine. It shouldn't be a big deal at this stage of the game. But uh, if they keep leaving him low like that, he's going to be really, really susceptible to hard swaps. The positioning here for Smexen is amazing. He's able to line of sight Chanimal while dealing damage to Wealthy Man. So Wealthy Man is being denied his ideal strategy of continuing to, to pump pressure into Absturge, while Smexen is able to get as much damage as possible, pull Cubsy into the open, and make that swap that he was looking for. But once again, we see a kidney onto Absturge, and immediately WizK is pumping out the fears, pumping out the Infernal Stun. They swap up to Wealthy Man on that stun. This could be terrible for Wealthy Man. He is well within range of his healer, but Cubsy gets kicked and swapped to by Smexen. The cleave for Method Awakened right now is unbelievable. Yeah, they're doing a great job of just making those hard swaps like I was just talking about. Uh, the ones that I'm worried about them uh, being susceptible to from Frogs in a Pond, they're just actually turning it back around. Now Smexen charging in once again, uh, putting a little bit of damage into Chanimal. I don't think they're going to focus on him as the kill target just yet. He's just looking for somebody to hit just to sort of keep Cubsy honest and make sure that Cubsy doesn't get an opportunity to sit back and top his team off. Absurd's getting low, though, into a kidney shot once again there from Wealthy Man. Forces Smexen to pull back to try and peel for Absurd, and he is able to do that. Absurd is able to get back and get some heals going, but that's now left Wiz K relatively exposed. He's actually out of line of sight of his healer right now. Absurd's having to go into uh, the Ghost Wolf form to be able to get over there and get a couple of heals out on a Wiz K, but if they can make a hard swap on a Wiz K right now, he could actually be in a lot of trouble. Smexen getting super low as well. Die by the Sword comes out. That's a full blind on Absurd. He doesn't have any response for that. Smexen's having to pull back. Wiz K in trouble. Smexen in trouble. Absurd finally out of that. He's able to get over there and drop the uh, Spirit Link, at, but he's got to have to use the Ascendance as well just because his teammates are so low on health. Absurd does drop the Spirit Link, but he's left his entire team still at 50% health. That's a huge cooldown invested for not a lot of result. It's bought them a little bit of time, though, and we do see Frogs of the Pond moving up. Now look at Channel's position. We've been talking a lot about how Smexed is able to connect. He's oh! full kidding behind the pillar. His team left him behind. Earth and Shield Totem goes down. Will it be enough? He's able to get out of there just in oh. time, but dots are ticking. Smexed needs heals from his teammate. Absurd, Absurd can't get the heals, and Smexed goes down. Frogs in a Pond taking a convincing three to one victory over Method Awaken. What is they it? have broken the curse. <laughs> Rogs in the bond gonna be able to take this one. Oh. This DS can continue that. Chun Li is probably playing Ride the Wind, and I can imagine Novos is playing Electrocute, so that Ride the Wind will allow Novos to get into the face of his opponents and start spamming Purge quite early on. That's something Amni is going to need to keep an eye on. SSDS positioned far away from the fight. Evangeline, the only open target in the middle. Amni getting crowd controlled there on his trinket and his rapture, putting his team behind. Evangeline getting bursted down. Gets gripped back to the pillar, gets gripped back into the open by Bolito. Looking to get that divine shield in these early seconds of the fight, which would be devastating. Avenge is barely hanging on to it by a thread. Will they be able to trigger the Divine Shield? Yes, they get it, but now they are starting to rot down as well. They have the advantage for now. Will they be able to push through and find the kill here after the Divine Shield is the question. Valido and Chun-Li are getting pressured. Novos is in a dire straits. His entire team stacked up on a Rep Paladin. That is not where you want to be. No, not at all, but, uh, you know, having that uh, bubble down means that eventually is going to be a constant target, and it's going to be scary for Amni the entire time. Uh, as you see, Chun-Li did have to use a oh. fortifying brew during there. Ooh, instant trinket uh, sanctuary, but even with that, eventually he's just under fire. Amni gets gripped on his heel and eventually looking to fall as Splice looked to close. Blessing of Protection buying him a couple seconds. Crowd Control and Novos denies the purge, but follows it up finally to get the kill.
and spliced with relentless assault take game number one in this series. One of his first abilities, he got crowd controlled on it, so maybe he should wait until after the crowd control for that one, use pain suppression first. I would like to see better cooldown management between Amni and Avenge. Uh, SSDS, though, needs to get crowd control on Novos. Adaptation could make that difficult. Maybe he should play Scatter Shot. He's going to go for Bursting Shot Trap, but that triggers adaptation, and uh, I really think he maybe should have changed his Scatter Shot in this matchup. Interrupts Novos oh. on the heal, but Serenity has been popped. Amni once again gets paralyzed on his Rapture, and this could be another cooldown mismanagement. Double silence. Divine Shield triggers early on. It could be devastating. Amni gets interrupted on another heal. Avenge dips lower and lower. Will he be able to hang on? Rapture is now over. Amni gets roll kicked by Chun Li. Avenge is still low. He's trying to counter pressure at the same time. Regardless, they force that Divine Shield. Oh. That needs to be the last line of defense because now he's going to be scared. Unless he can pull off this kill early on. Valido, Ice Pound, Fortitude, dangerously low. SSDS has done a good job oh. this game getting crowd control, and that crowd wow. control carried off. Hard. Okay. Nice. All right. Well done from SSDS. Even with some, maybe some cooldown mismanagement there from Amni and uh, Avenge, uh, SSDS carried that. Yep. So to play with a rep pilot, it's like, well, you're rep pilot and you play with hunters, so do it. <laughs> All right, so let's see if uh, Splice can stay ahead of this. Novos went relentless. I think it's still better than Adaptation, but won't allow him to control his trinket, which means he needs to preemptively get his cooldowns out. Already caught into a hodge. SSDS jumping across the map, looking for an early trap. Goes for Bursting Shot. Needs to find that full trap. Lands it. Valido now will be in trouble. Avenge is sinking his teeth in. Valido tries to deflect with the anti-magic zone, but he runs out of it for just a global and takes it to the face. Tons of damage coming out. Novos pops a sentence. Amni is chasing him down for a fear. Penance to boost his movement speed. The pressure is still high. They land the fear. A bit overlapped, I think, with the stun there. Valido recovers with an anti-magic shell and earthen shield totem. Now Valido's looking to turn this around towards Avenge. Yeah, and that was a great job by Amni. Uh, like we said before, on the Grand, that pain suppression wasn't used. He used it right away to, to stop the uh, the Divine Shield from proccing, so that was a great job. Now they're going to turn it back on to Chun-Li, who's going to port nice away uh, to his healer to get a little bit of heals. Uh, but now in this game, I feel like Amni overused his cooldowns. He used pain suppression and rapture, so only Divine Shield is left which means Sneaky Snakes are on a clock. Do they have enough time to take Valido out? Valido was patient, held on to Icebound Fortitude. Amni's trying to evacuate. Life Grips eventually now, but chun -Li goes for that Fist of Fury, looking to get that Divine Shield Force. Binding Shot catches Valido. He trinkets out. He wants that. Now the Incapacitate. This could easily be the Divine Shield, and this overuse of cooldowns could cost them the match. Eventually mounts up to try and retreat away. chun -Li in hot pursuit. Valido being counter-pressured. He needs to retreat back to the pillar, trying to break Novos out of that trap, but now followed up with the stun. Valido getting cleaved down, and SSDS once again carrying the fight. Yeah, look, Amni pushing in for a fear, gets it on to Novos, who has to sit through it. Uh, but, you know, his team's looking okay right now. There looks like they're going to go on to Chun Li. Chun Li does have his touch of karma available. There he goes. Now he's going to use it so he can stay offensive uh, onto eventually, actually. Uh, oh, and there Serenity we go. Popped. Tons of damage follows that up. Divine Shield immediately procs from that. And now the clock is ticking. Full trap has landed. Valido already retreating away. Valido's defensive play has been great in this match. Icebound Fortitude to line of sight. Reconnects with Novos. Can connect some healing waves. Gets interrupted, though, by Avenge. Nice interrupt play. Any crowd control on Novos. Bursting shot. Valido still down at half. Novos needs to get some heals. Gets interrupted again. Well done from Sneaky Snakes. Do they have the follow-up? Valido's getting pressured. Goes for another heal. Finds that one healing wave. Amni moves in, but he walks into a leg sweep. Good heals from Chun-Li, buying Novos more time to heal. But Chun-Li is now getting cleaved down. They go for the Hodge. SSDS needs to land this trap. He gets paralyzed. Well done from Chun-Li. Stalls out the trap, but now eventually even swaps to Novos, trying to create some triple pressure. Novos doing a good job to recover, though, from this onslaught. Triple fear. Huge mistake. They get feared out of the anti-magic zone. Full trap to land it out. And SSDS looking to close this. True shot. Pop Valido in full retreat. Will he fall is the question. Trap is now faded. Spirit Link reconnects. Splice stay in it, but Novos has a lot of work ahead of him. Oh, the binding and plus the hammer of justice onto Novos. Novos is getting low. Also, everyone rotting down. You cannot stack against this team ever, or this is what happens. Yes, Chun Li's gonna turn around. Pressure. Serenity gets popped. They have to kill Evangeline in this go. Do they have enough damage? Life grip, death grip back, and Avengers looking to fall. Chun Li pulls off the miracle. I don't think SSDS can pull this 2v3 off. I don't know. They have a trap onto Novos. No, they Amni doesn't damage. believe in no, that whatsoever. And Sneaky Ooh. Snakes wow. clocked. Uh, Valido and Chun Li have been playing Windwalk or death night forever and SSDS and Evangeline, I don't know how much they've played this together. And we are going to find out very soon as the gates do open right now. Splice find themselves on match point. Yep, Chun Li is unafraid, charging right in. Going to be going after Evangeline, as would be expected. He's going to be the squishiest target. Touch to go of death after. already. Very early touch of death. He's trying to bait some cooldowns. Yep, there it is. Uh, That's all of Chun Li's cooldowns right now. The Serenity, everything. And look at how much damage oh he's doing my. to Avenge. Ooh, that Divine shield, shield? Is Bob. 
Is he gonna get it? Oh, he's one ten percent, and Hamney has managed to hold on to Divine Shield. That's good. Perfect start here for Sneaky Snakes. Chun Li's aggression has been thwarted. Now that that cooldown and pressure is out of the way, eventually in SSDS, they got to put their foot on the gas pedal. They need to get in their faces, start getting some pressure out. Stun on Novos. Valido tries to deflect any magic zone. Both any magic zones traded out as they're trying to survive the rest of this initial assault. Amni getting interrupted on his heal there. Now getting interrupted once again by Valido. Sick interrupts from Splice to try and get that Divine Shield. Now a death grip onto the casted heal into a silence. Avengeling on the run, trying to kite and hold on to that Divine Shield. Novos pushing up for some purges as well. Amni now caught doing asphyxiate. No Sanctuary. Sanctuary about a second too late. Manages to hang on to the Divine Shield. And I can't help but feel that Sneaky Snakes are getting a little bit lucky. Yeah, as Amni's going to get back a bit, toss some heals out, trying to get behind uh, this side LOS right here as Evangeline is just waddling away from Chun-Li. Evangeline is playing Divine Hammer at this point. Uh, we see some CC on Evangeline for the setup with the double stun. There's the Serenity out of Chun-Li uh, as Evangeline is going to... Lido soloing right Amni. Oh, wow. He's yeah. not handling the pressure at all. As, uh, the blessing of protection, but Evangeline is low as well. Divine Shield triggers. Amni is tilting uh -oh. at this point. How can he recover? Everybody dying. Most of the defensive cooldowns have now finally been burned and spliced are in a dominating position. Chun Li is harassing Amni, constantly interrupting him. One more interrupt could secure the match. Goes for the healing surge, fakes the wind shear, gets silenced on the follow up. Valido can get over here for a mind freeze. Mind freeze lands. Amni's in trouble. The burst to follow it up into the asphyxiate. Trinket. Spirit Link, that needs to be enough to survive, but even if they recover, they've got nothing left. chun -Li sees the opening, eventually primary target gets taken down and Splice will take this three to one. The Splice yeah. are going to take it. Got to give it up to, for Sneaky Snake. Preparing and practicing this composition a lot. They wanted to make it a surprise for this event, and uh, I think this is a good time to uh, bust it out. I mean, I'm definitely surprised, so we'll have to see uh, if the Double Demon Hunter works out for him. They are going in right away, going hard onto Oz immediately. Mez actually getting knocked away from that Thunderstorm uh, on his I-Beam. That's a little bit unfortunate for that opener there. Trill taking a fair bit of damage, but they're giving it right back to Oz. The Stormboat comes out onto Trill. That's going to lock him out on his Metamorphosis. Uh, but Mez has his meta available as well. Uh, Oz is just taking so much damage right now with the Astral Shift active. Joxy using his Artifact active as well to put on as much healing as he can. It looks like they're actually going to have to switch targets here. Yeah, Colo with a nice cycle and full fear on the Colo. Roscoe trying to turn around the pressure, but right now Onion Ball on the back foot. Imprisonment over onto Joxy. He's just bark skin as well. Trill having to run away, though, in a lot of trouble. Uh, he might actually dip down into that XE range as the Hex over onto Colo. It's not going to be dispelled out. Oz, though, with nothing left. No Astral Shift. Iron Bark is forced out. Imprisonment on the Iron Bark, though. Joxy's not going to be able to take advantage of that bonus healing whatsoever. Mez and Trill all over the place right now. Everyone from Onion Ball is getting lower and lower. No defensive cooldowns left. They can get one more nice swap over onto Oz or Joxy. This could just be the game, but Trill taking a lot of burst in the meantime, getting lower and lower. And Iron Bark going to be forced out from Colo onto Trill, but Joxy getting lower. Roscoe might have to use that dive of the sword, gets imprisoned on it. Anytime anyone on Onion Ball uses a defensive cooldown, they immediately get put into jail. Yeah, definitely. They're doing a great job swapping around now over onto Joxy for just a second. Oz actually used his Thunderstorm just a second ago, so he has no way to get away other than that uh, gust of wind we just saw. No way to get away from those Demon Hunters, but it uh, looks like, yep, there they are. They're going to reconnect onto Oz. He's trying to get a healing surge out as Joxy's caught into that in prison. Double uh, Chaos Nova comes out onto both Oz and Roscoe. Cyclone now coming out onto Roscoe as well. Do they have anything for Joxy? Does he even need anything? No. Uh, Cyclone comes out on Oz at low health. Joxy doing his best to try and keep his teammates alive, but these two Demon Hunters are just pinging all over the place and it's so much work for Joxy to try and keep up with it. Yeah, absolutely. And when these when these metamorphoses come back up for both Trill and Mez, that might just be the enrage timer for Onion Ball. They need to make something happen right now. Trill and Mez both connecting over onto Oz. Thorns has been used, so good job by Joxy trying to deflect some of that damage. But both Mez and Trill both have their blur available. Metamorphosis coming up just right now. It's going to be very scary for Onion Ball in just a moment when they decide to use that demon form. Uh, it's actually a really nice vortex by Joxy slowing down some of Mez's damage. Unfortunately for him, Mez is a demon hunter, so he's able to reconnect quite easily, forcing out the trinket with that Chaos Nova. But Joxy has no trinket, still has his bar skin available. Trill trying to connect now. They're actually choosing to split up their metamorphosis, it looks like. So Trill's going to be using it now. Double Chaos Nova onto Roscoe as well as Joxy. But honestly, Oz and Roscoe doing a good job handling this situation. Um, just splitting up at this point, so they're not getting cleaved down. I think it's intelligent. 
Yeah, and they do have, uh, Onion Ball has pretty much all of their defensive cooldowns available once again, with the exception of Roscoe, who's now getting cleaved down by the Demon Hunters. Mez and Trill, both with their Metamorphosis, is active now, trying to do as much damage as they can. Looks like Trill's gonna split off and put Joxy into a prison, jump right back around. They're going on to Oz. Oz does have both his Thunderstorm and his Astral Shift available if he needs them, but there's the Chaos Nova coming out, trying to just slow him down as best as he can. Joxy now out of that CC, using his Artifact ability once again, switching over onto Roscoe. Uh, both Demon Hunters doing some damage to him, Ooh. throwing him into the prison at low health. Oz into the Cyclone as well. Do they have anything to slow up Joxy? Do they have enough time here to be able to get the kill onto Roscoe? Uh, Trill doing as best as he can while Mez chases down Joxy, but Joxy got a great Cyclone off onto Mez, and that's going to give him the moment he needs to catch back up. He has a beautiful Bash clone over onto Mez, giving Joxy enough time to stabilize, but then a double Chaos Nova coming in once again. Oz, uh, Oz and Roscoe, they can't be... Uh, stacking up like this and eating those double chaos now, but I guess there's not too much Roscoe can do. He needs to be able to peel uh, for Trill and Mez, unfortunately. So he does get caught in those double suns. Oz getting lower and lower. Still has that Astral Shift. Corrin's going to be thrown out as well. Trill getting lower and lower. Almost into Execute range in prison over on Roscoe. He's kiting away. It looks like something has maybe happened, unfortunately. Trill's not going to be getting any heals at this point. Chaos Nova over onto Joxy. It looks like Mez is continuing to play this one out, trying to get pressure over onto Joxy. Trill doing the best to kite, the best he can to kite away. Darkness has been forced out as well well, but uh, I'm just not sure that double War Stomps can be thrown in and Trill, unfortunately, won't be able to last much longer. Yeah, it looks like we did have an issue with Colo there, which uh, we'll hopefully find out from our admin team what the ruling is on exactly what happens there. Uh, that would be very unfortunate for Method Yeah, we, we'll let the refs figure that one out. I'm definitely not a ref, but I can say with 100 points from Roscoe as well, and then you really need to shut down these Cyclones that are coming in from Colo, because that Cyclone and that amount of control is just over the top for Method Synergy. It makes it so difficult for Onion Ball. And here we go once again. Mez and Trill both jumping in right away. Uh, we'll have to see if they're able to get the same amount of pressure going that they were last time. Uh, looks like they're going to have to go onto Roscoe a little bit. No, excuse me, Oz is still in there. I thought I saw him jump away, but it was actually Mez jumping over onto Joxy to get that stun off. Uh, Oz still taking a lot of pressure. Joxy under a lot of pressure as well. Roscoe, too. It's so difficult to keep track of just how much damage is actually coming out here. Roscoe actually in a lot of trouble using his Die by the Sword, immediately getting imprisoned off of that. And that seems to be the real strength of this, uh, this composition, is that they're just able to throw somebody in jail anytime they try to do anything. Yeah, it makes it so difficult for Joxy if he uses the Iron Bark, he's not able to get that bonus healing capitalized, but luckily for him, he still has that cooldown. Ozzo has no Astral Shift. That's going to be a full fear coming in from Roscoe, trying to get some pressure over onto Mez, who's caught into the full Storm Bolt. He doesn't have a Trinket. Iron Bark going to be used. Darkness is well coming in from Trill. Uh, that was a nice Cyclone coming in from Joxy, realizing that Method Synergy is overreacted, able to freeze up his HP. Luckily, Cole is able to top him off now. Roscoe, as well as Joxy, caught into that double stun. A lot of pressure coming in from Trill, as well as Mez right now. Blood Elf Silence as well. Roscoe has nothing left. Gets taken out. Method Synergy going to be going up 1-0 to zero in this series. And Method's showing that this may not just be a cheesy composition as well. I mean, we talk about them picking it in the blind pick, obviously. In just a couple of seconds. Uh, I, I don't know what we can really say about it at this point other than I, I'm just excited to see how it plays out. Yeah, we'll have to see. Uh, last time, Method Synergy opted for a split strategy. We saw Mez over onto Joxy, and uh, Trill went over onto Oz and tried to split pressure. Uh, it looks like they're trying to do something similar in this game, but Mez going to get caught into that Stormbolt right away. Roscoe does not want to get caught into that Double Chaos Nova, trying to peel up Mez just a little bit in this matchup. But it looks like both Trill and Mez committing over onto Joxy right now. Double Chaos Nova is going to be used. A lot of damage, a lot of pressure. Barskin has been used. Joxy's come to that bear form. He uses a Frenzied Regen. He might get imprisoned on it. There it is. Frenzied Regen's not going to be doing too much. Just just like uh, we were saying, Roscoe getting lower and lower as well. And then Joxy has to play catch up. That's going to be imprisonment over on Roscoe on his dive of the sword. Joxy getting lower and lower. He might have to actually use that iron bark to place his away, but he's not going to be able to get away for too long. Both Mez and Trill on his tail right now. Oz trying to create some pressure over on Nicola, but really not able to get too much done at this point of the game. Another demon form is going to be used there by Trill. You know, I like that Method Synergy has opted to split up their demon forms and split up their damage. Yeah, it's, it's obviously working out very, very well for them. It's also interesting how Colo has just basically had Oz on him the entire time. Now Roscoe is finally connecting, but Colo just has not even been worried about Oz. He's been kiting so effectively. Roscoe getting into a little bit of trouble here once again. We're going to be watching for ooh, Joxy actually getting out of line of sight and using that Tranquility, but Mez is no fool. He's going to immediately come over there. Actually interrupts the Cyclone and drops the Chaos Nova as well. Oh. Now Joxy into some trouble here. He could just go down right now. Does he have the Bark Skin? He does have the Bark Skin available, but he's going to hold on to it. Actually go into bear form for just a second. That's going to allow him to get away. Drops the Cyclone onto Colo. Are they going to be able to follow anything up with this? Looks like they're trying to. Stun's coming out onto both 
both Trill and Mez. Trill, Trill could be in some trouble here. He does not have his Blur available or any other defensive cooldowns other than the Darkness, uh, which I believe was actually dropped by... Uh, yeah, that was Trill's Darkness that just went down. Uh, so he is able to use that to survive through it, but that did look a little bit scary for him there for a second. Looking a lot better for Onion Ball. They have pressure all over the place. Both Mez... Or just, sorry, just Mez doesn't have his Trinket, so that might be another opportunity for them. They can catch Mez and a Storm Bolt's done. With any CC over on Nicolo, they could close up the game. Joxie now caught into a full Chaos Nova. He's not in bear form. Bark skin might not be enough. But Blood All Sun's going to be used as well. Frenzied Regen used, but he gets imprisoned on it, so he's not going to get any healing there. Joxie could be in a lot of trouble right now. He does have that Iron Bark available for him, though. Looks like Colo getting swapped to Onion Ball, trying to turn around the pressure over onto Method Synergy. Full Cyclone. Joxie doing a good job this game with those Cyclones. I like to see Mez and Trill shut that down just a little bit harder. Uh, but it looks like they're finally able to reconnect. That's going to be Thorns used by Joxie. Still not using that Iron Bark. Able to easily top himself off with his Artifact weapon. Now Colo could be in a little trouble just camping that bear form. Going to be finally using that Iron Bark to keep himself alive. Joxy still getting trained down by Mez and Trill, uh, but in that bear form, he looks pretty safe. Yeah, it looks like he's going to be able to recover from that just fine. Uh, now we see Mez and Trill once again splitting up their damage. Uh, they're both in metamorphosis form. They're just spreading their damage out as much as they can. Roscoe, Oz, and Joxy all taking pressure right now. The Cyclone finally lands on a Trill. It's going to slow that down on Joxy just a little bit. Trill looks like he's just going to turn around, go after. Uh, looks like Roscoe is the kill target at the moment, but they've been pinging around so much that it's hard to actually keep up with who they're targeting at any even moment. Roscoe getting low. Mez uh, just uh, anticipates, excuse me, the, uh, the heroic leap immediately lands on top of him and now once he's low on health drops the imprison once again uh, and unfortunately it was a little bit mistimed didn't catch him at his lowest health Joxie able to top him back off once again and yeah onion ball actually looks like they're dealing with this really well yeah they are Russell getting a little bit low dive of the sword almost back up for him though that's a good sign uh, that he's not gonna be able to do any cheeky swaps over onto him but as I say that he's taking a lot of pressure nice thorns though uh, by Joxie making sure that when Trill and Mez attack Roscoe they're definitely gonna be feeling it, uh, that reflected damage Oz in a good position Oz this game doing a lot more off healing I've noticed he's throwing out those healing waves over and over to help stabilize his team's HP, make it a little bit easier for Joxy. If we look at mana, Colo's mana is still doing exceptionally well. Joxy a little bit lower. Uh, another split coming in from Trill and Mez. Oz getting low. Didn't use his Astral Shift, but he is caught into the offensive Cyclone, so Joxy not able to really get too many hots on him. It looks like now Demon Form's going to be committed over onto Joxy by Mez. Both Trill and Mez doing a lot of damage, but Joxy doing a good job in Bear Form. Once again, he gets caught into the Chaos Nova, though. Has to trinket back into Bear Form. Might have to use that Frenzied Regen, but he gets imprisoned on that Iron Rock right away, and now they're turning turning their attention over onto Oz. Oz could be in a lot of trouble, but he still has the Astral Shift. Trill get, getting a little bit low right now. Iron Dark has been used, but Oz is in a lot of trouble. Joxy's going to be activating that artifact, and that should be enough to keep Oz alive. Yeah, and with that Thorns as well, they're going to have to turn away and start attacking another target. Mez could be in some trouble here. It looks like he's trying to connect onto Joxy at this moment, uh, but Roscoe is actually being able to put out a whole bunch of damage right now. Joxy is having to run away, and he is going to be able to get out of line of sight. Displacer Beast away once again. He's actually successfully kited two Demon Hunters, uh, which is quite a bit of an accomplishment. Trill now in some trouble. The damage that Oz and Roscoe is able to put out is actually fairly substantial. It's just a matter of if they're able to do it. Trill now with the I-Beam. Once again, they're trying to connect onto Oz. The silence comes out onto Oz. Are they going to be able to follow it up with the additional damage they need? No. He actually uses the... Oz actually is running Torrent. Uses the uh, War Stomp to be able to shut that down. That was a really, really interesting play there from Oz actually running Torrent. I hadn't actually realized until now that it, that was what he was playing. Trill now taking such a big amount of damage once again. Uh, and he does not have his Blur available. Whoa. He could actually just go down right here. He's stunned up. The darkness is down oh. uh, from Mez, I believe. Uh, now Trill having to drop his own darkness. They've got double darkness down. Somehow, some way, Trill is still alive. That was some crazy seat of the pants gameplay there for a second. Somehow they've stabilized. They're turning it back around onto Roscoe. Yeah, Oz had such a th sick thunderstorm there, knocking Trill out of that darkness, but they're turning around the pressure over onto Roscoe with the imprisonment now turning their attention over onto Joxy. But Trill is in a lot of trouble right now. He has no blur, no trinket. Polo uh, telling him to come back to the pillar so he can stabilize his HP. Roscoe pushing in, but this this might be a mistake. He's in a little bit of trouble right now, but Joxy's in a good position. Um, as realizes this goes over to him. Gets caught into the War Stomp clone, though. Joxy's honestly playing this game exceptionally well with his kiting, with his crowd control, yes. with his cooldown management. Very, very impressed keeping his team in this game. Full bash over onto Colo now. Joxy pushing in once again, but the double stun comes in. Joxy's getting teared apart by these two Demon Hunters. Needs to try to get away, gets imprisoned on that frenzied regen. Now Roscoe's getting cleaved down as well. Might have to activate the Dive of the Sword, but could it be too late? Imprisoned on the Dive of the Sword. Joxy getting lower and lower. He still has that Iron Bark. Might have to use it on himself. A little bit of a greedy play. Used it maybe too late. Roscoe now has not too many hots. They're turning their attention 
Fortune over onto him. Double Chaos Nova once again. Joxy Trinkets out into the Blood Elf Silence. Roscoe doing the best he can to kite away. He might be able to survive right now. Joxy trying to heal him up, but this Demon Hunter damage might just be too much. Roscoe might be able to stabilize. You can see Joxy just throwing out the healing touches over and over. Finally, Imprisonment comes in, but Mez is really low. He needs to be able to kite away. Full Cyclone over onto Colo. Oz chasing. Mez trying to jump up right now. Able to jump off all time platform. That's what we were talking about. Demon Hunters have so much mobility on this map. Yeah, Mez still in a lot of trouble right now. He won't have any defensive cooldowns available for a while. Uh, if Onibal can make something happen real soon here, looks like they might be trying to do it off of that war stop. No, they weren't quite able to make anything happen there. Looks like Oz mostly just trying to get away. Uh, he does not have any defensive cooldowns available. And in fact, Joxy doesn't have anything for him either. So Oz needs to be really, really careful right now and try to do his best uh, to basically not die. The double chaos Nova comes out. Colo caught into a full cyclone uh, off the other side of the map, but Joxy gets caught into a prison as well, uh, which is going to lower his healing ability for that period of time. Obviously, he's not able to cast anything. Oz still under so much pressure. The Metamorphosis coming out from Trill once again. Mez uh, now with the blur available is able to get a little bit more aggressive than he was before, but he is actually going to pull back over here, reconnect with Colo, get some healing. Oh, Trill in oh. some trouble though. He's super low. The blur is active. Is it going to be enough? The Chaos Nova comes out from Mez and that's just the peel that he needed just at that moment in time. Colo somehow able to keep Trill alive. Yeah, Trill doing a good job with that Blade Dance, avoiding the execute. Triple Fear coming in from Roscoe. Onion Ball pushing in. They want to get a Aggressive, full stun onto Colo. Imprisonment over onto Roscoe. Joxy's mana is not doing well, though. If Method Synergy can live just a little bit longer, they could win this game just through attrition. Joxy getting swapped to in bear form with Barkskin. Might actually just go down as well. But all Silence has been used. Gonna have to use that Iron Bark. He gets imprisoned on the Frenzied Regen. Mesmin Trill doing a good job with the counter pressure here with these Demon Forms. War Stomp's gonna be used. Joxy tries to displace away, but Colo vortexes it. Joxy's in so much trouble into the bear form. Frenzied Regen gonna be used out. Iron Bark as well, and the Thorns. Every single defensive cooldown. Jox Joxy hangs on by a thread somehow alive, but nothing, he's nothing left for Roscoe. Roscoe, no dive with the sword. Trill and Mez trying to connect, and Roscoe goes down. Mid-heroic leap, he falls down to the ground. Wow, what an impressive amount of pressure coming out from Method Synergy there, and an impressive... They definitely have a shot moving forward, but I think Method Synergy plays it right. They rotate properly. Uh, they should have an advantage uh, going into game number three. And here we go, Mez and Trill once again immediately out for blunt, the, out for blunt, out for blood, the hunt is on. Somehow I combined those two words as I was saying that. Triple Fear though comes out right away from Roscoe, gonna break up that initial pressure just a little bit and that may be what they needed here in the opener. As it looks like both Trill and Mez, neither of them are really able to connect too well uh, off of that opener. They obviously, they used both of their fell rushes to get in there as quickly as they did. Uh, and so they didn't quite have the mobility right off the bat. That said, now Joxy under a lot of pressure, having to use his bark skin there, gets caught into to the imprison off of that bark skin once again. As soon as a defensive cooldown is used, you see them going into jail right away. Roscoe now running over and trying to pursue as best he can, uh, but it just doesn't look like they're able to get too much done right now. Yeah, Trill caught into that full cycle, and well done by Joxy once again, actually throwing out that war stomp. Full Stormbolt over onto Mez. Uh, Onion Ball looking to get aggressive over onto them. That's going to be key. They need to get these Demon Hunters into stun if they want to win. And also, these swaps over onto Colo seem to be very good. Colo down to around 50% HP is going to be using that Renewal and that Iron Bark. Now, Joxy in a lot of trouble. Trill basically soloing him right now. He tops himself off quite easily. Was, I think it was a big crit heal there for Joxy, but he gets caught into the full chaos. Now, both Mez and Trill able to get over to him. Roscoe has to come back and heal, but once again, Imprisonment is going to be used. Mez taking a little bit of damage. Oz throwing Colo into the full hacks. Actually, that Warstop hacks. Good job by Oz, but Joxy's in so much trouble. He's able to get away. That was a beautiful Vortex once again. Joxy's had two really clutch Vortexes in this game. Mez getting lower and lower, trying to kite away. He's almost in execute range, though. Colo caught into the bash now. Joxy looking for that Cyclone, but he gets interrupted. Mez coming back, realizing that uh, he's in big, big trouble if Cola went into that cycle and was able to shut it down. Now with Oz and Roscoe both getting low. Yeah, both Mez and Trill did actually have to use their blur in that exchange also. So Trill could be in some trouble here as he's getting lower. He has his darkness available, but that's about it. Uh, he's going to try and back off a little bit, but Oz with that uh, Thorns just now wearing off could be in some trouble. The double Chaos Nova went out on both Oz and Roscoe. Meanwhile, Mez is uh, over here messing with Joxy, drops the Chaos Nova on him, uh, and it's just going to be looking to probably go for that uh, that good Imprison at some point. Throws the Blood Elf Silence out. There goes the Cyclone. Uh, he actually fake casted that, and I don't believe he actually was able to get the Interrupt off. So very well played there by Joxy. Uh, they're now finally the interrupt lands on him as soon as he tries casting a heal. And now Trill's coming back over as well, trying to put some damage into him as best it can, but he's gonna, just going to displace your beast out of there. Actually using the Iron Bark on himself instead of the Bark Skin. That's an interesting choice, as now Roscoe's in a little bit of trouble. Yeah, he doesn't want to die in those stuns. They're swapping over onto Roscoe, like you said, though. Mez taking a lot of pressure as well. Onion Ball is all over the place in this game. They've got nice crowd control over onto Colo. We actually had to trink it out a little bit earlier. Trill now caught into the full bash. Is he going to get executed? Blur, it has been activated. Looks like Joxy 
Roxy trinket it out. He wants to get the aggressive CC. Onion Ball looking for the all-in kill right now. They realize they have a lot of pressure, a lot of momentum. Joxy using that thorns as well, but the triple chaos Nova coming in. Both Trill and Mez gonna be ripping into the entire team of Onion Ball. Full Cyclone over onto Roscoe. That's an imprisonment over on the Joxy on his bark skin. And now Oz is taking quite a bit of damage. Might have to actually activate that astral shift, and that would be a disaster for Onion Ball. Basically every single defensive cooldown forced out. Joxy once again getting swapped to, trying to get out of that cyclone, but there's almost no chance he's gonna get that out with two demon hunters and their range kicks. I think that's very wishful thinking. Yeah, definitely. That's uh, that's just not gonna happen. That is not within the realm of possibility. Uh, meanwhile, he's now just running away, uh, hanging out in bear form. Kolo also hanging out in bear form, but I think that's more of a defensive play. He just doesn't need to be casting heals right now because Mez and Trill are just being so aggressive. Joxy now thrown into that in prison. Uh, I'm not actually sure why. They seem to actually be making a lot of pressure against him. Now the double chaos Nova comes out. They could just end Joxy right here with that blood elf silence. He's getting so low. Is he able to get away? The Ursal is actually pulled him back in from Colo. Very nicely played there, uh, but Joxy somehow manages to get away. May have actually dropped down his own Ursals as response. Uh, I'm not entirely certain, but now with Trill once again connecting to him. Now Roscoe out in the open as well. Uh, Mez looking for a target. Looks like he's just going to go right back onto Joxy. Joxy does have his bark skin available at this point. He's going to use the thorns as well, and that's going to trigger uh, Trill and Mez. Trill, Trill and Mez, excuse me. Apparently my brain is falling apart, but they're going to go back onto another target. Looks like they're going after Roscoe right now. Yeah, Trill dropping his darkness to help Mez. He didn't have a trinket. He was caught into the full storm bowl. It's well done by him. Cole didn't have iron bark as a response, so I like what Trill just did there. Kept him alive, but that's a triple fear coming in from Roscoe, but they just wow. can't find the damage. Both Mez and Trill able to easily kite. The Chaos Nova going to be thrown over onto Joxy. Polo having to play catch up a little bit now over onto Trill. Joxy getting lower and lower. He still has Barsky and still has Iron Bark, though. He should be completely fine during the swap pull bash over onto Mez looking for the Cyclone. He gets interrupted by Trill, though. Joxy falling further and further behind. Actually activates the Vortex. Gets behind the cart. He should be able to top himself up. Now, nice little swap over onto Colo. Stormbolt. Oz trying to solo him down. Double Chaos Nova over onto Oz as well as Roscoe. Astral Shift has been used, but that's going to be the imprisonment once again. Freezing Oz's HP. Mez getting lower and lower, though. He needs to be careful. He doesn't overextend at this point in the game. Oz just spamming out heals, trying to help out Joxy the best he can. Mez getting lower and lower. Roscoe is all over him at this point in the game. Joxy still has all his defenses, though. This is looking good for Onion Ball. I like what Onion Ball is doing aggressively. They're definitely keeping Method Synergy on their toes. Yeah, it seems like as the series is going on, Onion Ball is getting better and better at dealing with the pressure coming out from Trill and Mez, as well as those constant imprisonments. Joxy now with the Iron Bark on himself, again opting for that over the Bark Skin. Now the Bark Skin comes out. Very nicely played there by Joxy, recognizing, recognizing that he was going to need both of those, so he might as well use the Iron Bark first, get that cooldown going so that it'll be up a little bit quicker in case he needs to throw it at Roscoe, who's now taking a whole bunch of pressure. Joxy into the Imprison once again. Roscoe with the Die by the Sword active. They don't actually have the Imprison for a little while to be able to throw that out. It finally comes out a little bit later, but just at the end of that uh, Die by the Sword falling off. So uh, starting to see uh, maybe a few cracks in the armor here for Trill and Mez. That was nice synergy uh, by both Joxy and Oz. Oz knocking the back. The Vortex was dropped. Trill getting lower and lower, though. Cyclone over on Nicolo. Trill trying to kite away the best he can, prevent some of these heals coming in from Joxy. Colo still caught into crowd control. It gets uh, thrown over onto Trill. He trinkets out of that. He wants Colo to be able to top him up. But I think he actually cycled in the Iron Bark. So really good job by Joxy there. That's a huge defensive cooldown that it negated. Now Colo's into the full hex. He actually trinket out of that as well. So good job by Oz sneaking in that CC. Joxy getting lower and lower, though. Does have the Iron Bark using Thorns as well. So Mez and Trill taking a lot of damage from that Thorns ability. Imprisonment over onto Joxy on that Iron Bark. Still has Bark Skin, though. Oz doing a good job harassing Colo at this point of the game. Roscoe, though, in a little bit of trouble. Chaos only going to be thrown over onto him. Joxy actually has to trinket out. Iron Bark has faded, so he doesn't have the damage reduction anymore. Demon Form going to be used by Mez. They can connect over onto Joxy. This is a disaster for Onion Ball. Joxy getting lower and lower. He's trying to kite behind the tomb. Gets away into Bear Form once again. Fear coming in by Roscoe. They want to get aggressive. That was an offensive fear with the Stormbolt over onto Mez. Mez trinkets out. Blur has been activated as well. Just wants to prevent this damage, and they can stay aggressive over onto Joxy. The full Chaos Nova comes in. How can Joxy survive this? Oz throwing out his heals over and over. Joxy gets into Bear Form. Still trying to survive, trying to get away. War Stomp was used. Thorns used as well. A huge crit heal from Joxy, basically stabilizing his HP. Onion Ball recovers in sort of a disaster situation. Yeah, I think that Imprison was more of a, a sigh of relief for Joxy than anything particularly uh, uh, a game ending for him. Roscoe now in some trouble, but that's fine. They're just going to reconnect back onto Joxy once again. But Joxy has the Iron Bark available. Can he use it? He does actually get out of uh, Bear Form and, ca and cast that right away. Now back into Bear Form once those heal over time effects are active. 
Mez might start to be getting in a little bit of trouble here. We are at 15% dampening, which means it's going to be harder and harder for Colo to actually allow his Demon Hunters to stay aggressive. If Joxy can just stay alive through this yeah. damage, then Onion Ball may be able to uh, turn this back around. Trill getting super low right now. Darkness is active. Uh, Roscoe in there just dealing as much damage as he can. Now Trill getting knocked away from his healer. He's going to have to go ahead and Fell Rush back in there just to try and stay aggressive. Roscoe still taking lots of pressure, but Mez in the Stormbolt. They could just kill him inside the Stormbolt. He's getting super low, but no, they didn't have any follow up for Colo, so he's able to get a couple of clutch heals off there, uh, and with that artifact ability active, it looks like he's going to be able to stabilize them for now. Yeah, Darkness almost up for Mez, and they can survive just a little bit longer. Odd's in a lot of trouble right now. Joxy, Joxy uh, activating his artifact ability right now, trying to get a huge hot. It's going to be increasing his healing. He just splices away to safety. Trill trying to reconnect, but he's getting lower and lower. Maybe getting a little bit too over-aggressive. Has Blur Up actually gets feared in it. Colo caught into the full fear of Oz can land a hex out of this. This is a disaster for Method Synergy. Full storm over onto Trill. DR Cyclone coming in onto Colo. How is Trill going to be able to survive? Darkness comes in from Mez in the nick of time. That should be enough to keep him alive. Bash over onto Colo. He's still not out of crowd control, but he's able to top off Trill in that darkness. That's what I'm talking about, these get out of jail free cards with that darkness proving to be so good for Method Synergy. And now Trill turning his attention over onto Joxy. Joxy still has all his defensives, though. Demon Form going to be activated by both Mez and Trill. Method Synergy looking to close out this game at 23% dampening. Oz getting lower and lower. Barskin has been used by Joxy. Double Chaos Nova. Oz immediately trinkets out with a double War Stomp. Lands the full hacks on Colo. Good job by Oz. Mez in a lot of trouble right now. Trinket Blur. Oz getting lower and lower, though. It looks like Mez is going to be completely fine with that Trinket Blur. Oz getting interrupted there on that heal. He does have Thorns. He gets Cyclone, though, offensively. They can land in a prison over on the Joxy and get back to Oz. He could be in so much trouble. Joxy getting lower and lower. Who does he put his Iron Rock on? Looks like he commits it to himself. But now Oz doesn't have that available. So much pressure coming in from Trill and Mez at this point of the game. Roscoe also does not have that dive of the sword, but Joxy can just not get heals out. And now, finally, Trill taking quite a bit of damage. Actually, he activates his blur. That's going to be a lot of damage reduction as well as some dodge. But Joxy, how can he live this situation? Imprisonment can be used, but the bash over onto Trill. He has to somehow get out of it. He manages to double chaos over. Roscoe gets smoked, taken down. Good job by Method Synergy, but honestly, impressive performance by Onion Ball. Yeah, it really looked like in the last few moments there, it looked like Onion Ball may have been able to turn it around. Uh, but as it just sort of came to that ending point there, you could really...